But would you get married once? Yes. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah. I've done it all. What do you mean? He means to what say, I've done them all. Hold on. Hold on. Listen. This is the most I've ever heard you shut up. I never heard you shut up. This is the most I've ever heard you shut up. I've lived a good life. I've been. I've spent the vast majority of my life. Even your pinky got a boner. He's talking about it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant. And today we are joined by. Uh, the Riz God, mm. the okay. Drip God, okay, probably the greatest sports journalist alive right now. We have Stephen A. Smith. Hey. In the hey. Probably, yeah. definitely. 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 Yeah. 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 definitely yeah. Number yeah. One. Okay, who's number one if it's not you? Who's number I wouldn't two? know. You would. <laughs> I wouldn't know. You don't look backwards. I don't look backwards. <laughs> not when it comes to that. Now, now here's the thing. Yes, we, everybody knows you as like this, this great sports journalist, of mm -hmm. course, right? We know. But uh, I think what a lot of people don't know is you're quite the thespian, Stephen A. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't be humble now. Don't be humble now. Come on, bro. I was watching you, and I think I love my wife recently, and I was like, this guy is good, man. Well, wait a minute, man. That was about that was about 15 years ago. So you've only gotten better. Now, the General Hospital started. that Let's go. Let's go. That's, that's current. That's current. You know, I like it. I, I saw, like it. I, I saw like a little it. clip of you catching some bodies on General Hospital. That was now. hilarious. They did, <laughs> slow, they did it in slow mo for a Bro, reason. I didn't know what the it, was doing. It was <laughs> the wildest thing because I'm watching. Like, did someone fuck with this on YouTube? Yeah. Because it is slow mo. It is slow mo. But that's you, how they did it. That's how they did it. We didn't do it in slow motion, but they definitely slow mo to thank the good Lord because who the hell knows how I would look in real time. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you grew up, you know, you grew up. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they might, there might be some people that know, know in real time. <laughs> there might know? be some people that know. Whoa, whoa, no, was, little son, son. It was a little wild <laughs> out little there. Son, absolutely, that's true. That's true, but that's between us. That's between us. Ain't everybody business. But there are some people that know why the book is called Straight Shooter. Hey, that is that's true. what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah, they're yeah, not with yes. us anymore. Uh, they're here. They're here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the book, the book is great. Thank you. It's awesome. I mean, I know I've seen you, you know, make the rounds and like, Obviously, you're talking to so many people, but I, I was really curious because you were speaking about, okay, so right now, everybody can have an opinion. Yeah. And there was this, like, almost ethos in the book, which is like, yo, I had to earn a fucking opinion. Damn right. <laughs> mm. And I think that, like, it's something that younger generations, I'm 39. Yep. So even younger than me don't understand that there was a time where just having an opinion about sports only. Right. Not staying the fucking stats. Right. But just, this is my feeling. Right didn't exist unless you were at the upper echelon. Absolutely. And now when you see everybody just going on Twitter spouting off. <laughs> Here's the deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't mind it. Here's what I mind. I mind when your little young ass act like people didn't come before you to pave the way for you to be in the position that you're in. Mm. You don't have to be some intellectually brilliant individual to know respect. Somebody came before you that had to put up with bullshit that you never had to deal with. Mm. You can get, you can, now you can get, uh, uh, you, you can, you, you know, you can get on social media. You can express your views. You can build a following or whatever. Back then it didn't exist. And when we were in the newspaper industry coming up, you're a high school reporter, you're a features writer, you're a college reporter, you're a pro writer, or whatever the case may be. But the word columnist meant everything because that was the, those were the only people allowed and licensed to give their opinion. Mm. That's the era I came up in. So yes. I had to work through layers mm get promoted damn near 10 times yeah. over the course of my career before I was granted a column, uh, the columnist position. And in 2003, when the Philadelphia Inquirer named me a columnist, there were 20 people, there were 20 black people in American history given that title before me. Mm -hmm. I was the 21st. Wow. So now everybody got a damn opinion. Yeah, yeah. And I'm cool. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, cool. I'm, I'm cool with it. But when you try to question my opinion, I'm like, hold the fuck up. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Because you didn't work through all of this to get to this point. I did that shit. Mm -hmm. And now, and then, and then it ain't like I did it and I'm not doing shit. Yeah. And I'm asking you to hold on yeah. to the process I went through before I got to a point yeah. years ago. Yeah. No, I'm number one now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's present. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? My show's number one now. Yep. So how am I number one now? I'm still doing this shit. 
I literally went through all of this to get to that point, mm. but then you want to act like you get to forget all of that. Mm. No, I'm not letting you. Mm -mm. I'm not letting you do that. Mm -mm. That's all I'm saying. How many years, yeah. number one? 11 straight years. Oh. Um, tell, tell them again, tell me. 11, 11 straight. 11 straight. First, take is, first, take, first take has been number one, 11 straight years. And I think the biggest thing about it now is that they just put something out today, like last month in January, was our most watched January. And we averaged nearly 600,000 viewers. And that's that that matters. First of all, it's linear television. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's at 10 in the morning when people are at work and school. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, it doesn't take into account the re-airs, mm -hmm. nor the billions that you get on social media. Oh, so so is so, 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 so that's yeah. where it goes crazy. So the fact that you got that number is a really, really big deal. And it's like, you know, April 1st, I believe, marks the 11th straight year the show has been number one. Okay, okay. So you get the, you get the right to have an opinion. This is where I'm... Yes. I'm okay. You earn the right to have an opinion. You haven't had one before on paper. Do you haven't had what on before? Mean, meaning, before you're a columnist, right. you're, you're a reporting the writer, facts, you're right? Reporter, yes. just facts. Now they're like, "Yo, just go." The first one, do you ease into it or the? Oh hell no! You bring the rain. Okay, okay, okay. You bring the rain. Okay. You bring the rain. It's like I'm free. It's like I'm free. I'm free. I can say what the hell I really feel. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? It ain't just about well, this is what happened. This is what happened. This yeah. is what happened. And I'd find a way to like sting you a little bit by inserting my opinions, even when I was supposed to just be spewing, you know, yeah. spitting the news. Uh, but I'm like this. Look, he went down the lane. He had a wide open layup. He missed it. Yeah. That's fact. Yeah, 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 but you know, you can kind of read between the lines. Right. I'm putting a little sauce in it. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, damn it, he blew the damn light. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so it's a little bit, it's a little, it's, 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 it's real different in that regard. So I certainly make sure, I mean, the, the second they unleashed me. Do you remember the first column? Man, I don't remember the first column. I remember the fact that I was spitting out opinions left and right. I like, I never had a shortage of them. It was AI woman. It was Larry Brown the next. It was Tracy McGrady the next. It was all of this stuff. It didn't matter what it was. The second they unleashed me to give opinions, I was like, they don't know what the hell they just did. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is what I've been waiting for. And also, this is a time where you're interacting with these guys regularly. Yes. Now, a lot of people got opinions on, on Twitter, but they'll never meet Kyrie. Oh, right. They'll never meet Tracy McGrady. Right. You're seeing Tracy. Bro, he's at the games. All they, they're coming to your office. <laughs> it's all of them. It's like, but I'm at the games. I'm at, I was at the games. I was sitting courtside. I would go in the locker room pre-game, post-game. I traveled on the road. And I would literally walk up to catch. Yo, man, you ain't going to want to see the paper tomorrow. No. You don't want to see that. You 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 was garbage tonight. You don't want to see the paper tomorrow. That wow. that shit is not going to be pleasant. Did you ever have like? Because AI is a real AI. Dude. AI and I. A, well, we like brothers. That's my little brother. But we've gone through. You know, and and in fairness, in the interest of full disclosure, you had players on the 76ers, especially guys like Aaron McKee, Eric Snow and them. They used to call me an AI. Y'all like some damn married couple. Wow. Because we would literally go. One time we went eight months without speaking to each other. Nah. Wow. Eight months. And Over what? I, I what? had a... Because he didn't like some shit I wrote. What'd you say? You about know, practice? I, I, I said, no, no, what about practice? He didn't care about that. Believe it or not, he didn't care about that. It was like, it was like, he got mad. He got he got mad because I said that, you know, he taking liberties, you know, he's AI, but he's milking every single damn liberty he can. He need to get his act together and he didn't appreciate that. And he was so pissed off, we went without talking. And it got to a point where a couple of my colleagues pulled me to the side and said, yo, man, you the beat writer for the 76ers. You cannot go eight months without talking to the superstar of the team. Mm -hmm. And I said, watch me. What? <laughs> I said, I said, I said, was he, was he, I said, so what? I said, he don't speak. He's still giving quotes in press conferences and all stuff. It ain't stopping me from doing my job. I'm not going to be a prisoner to a guy that chooses not to talk to me. Mm. And so, so, so be it. And then his late friend, that whole practice, practice, we talk about practice. Yeah. What that fed off of was his frustration because one of his boys got murdered, uh, right? Just, just, just a week earlier. And oh. so he's saying, like, right. who cares about exactly. practice? Exactly. When exactly. Got right, right. Oh, it was one wow. of his boys. Well, that one, that boy that got murdered, God rest his soul. His name was Ra, and 
He's the one that brought me and AI back wow. together. Oh, wow. He was a real good dude. Real good, real good. You know, obviously he was a street kid. AI knew him. AI took care of him the whole bit, but he had a beautiful heart. He was beautiful people. Um, was always protective of AI. I didn't engage in no stupidness, no shenanigans. He was a really good brother, had his heart in the right place. And when AI wasn't talking, he had me and AI meet at a nightclub at 2.30 in the morning in Philadelphia off Spring mm. Garden Street and got us together to stop the nonsense and to start talking okay, to hold each other. On. So a street dude that's cool with AI hits you up and goes, I need you to be yeah. at he, a nightclub he, he called at me, He saw me at the game, said, meet me here tonight. And was there any he, part of you that's like... I'm from the streets, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, ain't nothing to me. Shit. Ain't nothing to me. You want me to be there at 3 30, That's where I'm going to be. And I showed up by myself. I was yeah. like, yo, what's up? So he, he, he got us together. Y'all need to squash all of this and all of this other stuff. And, you know, I just let AI know. I said, you know what? I, I, the only thing I said to AI that night, I said, you always get mad and you think about what I say. You don't give me enough credit for what I don't say. <laughs> and he was like, my man. Cause, Cause let that let that go. You knew about the hoes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 have, I have no comment. I have no, comment. I have no recollection of that. Oh, this guy's but, good. But, but but I will tell you. I will tell you. First of all, certain codes. First of all, certain codes. Number one, it ain't got to be about that. But if it was something about that, I'd be damned if anybody would ever hear something like that from me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know you, and I wouldn't tell on you. <laughs> ain't none of my damn business. You understand know what I'm saying? Really? You, ain't, you know, listen, I'm a reporter. I, I work would for never me. do anything, I work, baby. I'm a reporter. I, I work for you, me. baby. There you go. Yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah. Say, yeah. It. say it. Yourself. Say it. Say it. Say it. That's where you're supposed to do it. Yeah. But but I'm just saying it. You know, you go out and it's like, listen, I'm a reporter. Stuff like that. Don't break no laws. Don't get into the police blotters. Mm. Outside of that, all I care about is what you're doing on the court of field. Uh -huh. yeah. Ain't none of my business what's going on in your personal life. That's mm -hmm. that's my that's my cardinal rule. I've always been that way, and I will never change. I'm from Hollis, Queens. I'm from the streets of New York City, bro. Queens. There's a certain code that's applicable everywhere you go, and it transcends race. You understand what I'm saying? It's a bro code. You understand? Mm -hmm. You don't do it. Period. Do you mm. think that there's nothing to talk about? Do you think that Listen. is why you can talk to players? The, because you'll say some crazy shit to a player, but he knows you. He knows where you're from. He knows you respect the code, so he'll let you say more than a guy. That's like part you of it, say. though. But that, that's not like I don't have players that can't stand me or players that that hated me for something that I said or whatever the case may be. But when you when you say what you just said, understand. I don't believe I'm saying nothing crazy. Okay. My shit's fact-based. Mm -hmm. So the point is, is that I'm not some cat with a social media account that's just got an opinion. I've been covering the NBA for nearly 30 years. Mm. Coaches, players, owners, executives, player personnel directors, scouts, advertisers, sponsors, hanger-ons, honeys, wives, hmm. brothers, sisters, parents, everything. I'm connected all over the place. Right, right. And so my point is, is that when I come with an opinion... It's really not just an opinion. So if you see me sometimes uh, on TV and I'm getting into an argument with somebody, half the time I'm looking at them like, you fucking know I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, you know I'm not, I, I'm not making it up. You know. Mm. You, it's just that you know I can't say anything. And then when you'll see me get really, really heated is when I feel like I'm sitting across from somebody that knows I know and knows I can't and won't say and take what I really don't. Ah. And they're taking advantage of it when they know the truth. They like they have the information too. Yeah. So you know that I'm not telling you all I could say. You know why. And by the way, for any guy that's in the business that I'm in, please understand something about most journalists. We all know 75% more than what we reveal. Mm. Wow. Never forget that. We all know more. Then we reveal. So your opinion means that, more for that, too. It's just that, you know, you can't, you, 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 listen, you can bring people in the White House yeah. that cover the White House. They don't tell you everything. Mm, they true. tell you there's certain stuff that they tell you and there's certain stuff that they hold. People that cover Hollywood, there's certain stuff that they say and there's certain stuff that they hold. You can't say everything because if you say everything, no one will trust you. That's right. Yeah. No one will trust you. No, that's right. You, you got to be, you got to prove that you're someone who can keep secrets. But that's, exactly that, what so you that's, said AI. So that's the other thing is like, 
And I think that's where a lot of these newer, like newer media struggles is they're running for clout so fast, they get one little tidbit of juicy right. information, and instead of storing that and building trust right. with somebody, right. they throw it out there well, and get fucking retweeted but, 100 but times. But you consider that media. See, I consider that bloggers. Uh, I consider that people that's just trying to create clickbait and stuff like that. If you are a member of the media, you absolutely know that comes along with the job. I'm telling you right now, I don't say 80% of the stuff that I know. Wow. Mm. I cannot. 80%. 80% because the, the objective is to build trust. Mm -hmm. For you to know you can trust me, that you can talk to me. There's plenty of stars who will remain nameless. Let me, Stephen, hey, man, let me talk to you, man. Mm. This is shit that's happening. Wow. That, mm. But you can't say this. Has anyone ever been yeah. grateful? Has anyone ever hit you up and been most like... Most are grateful. Said, mm. Even when you're critical. Most are, mm. most are grateful. Even when you're critical. Because, no, because they get what I left out. Yeah. Right. You see what I'm saying? And they'll hit you up and be like, and no. They'll, 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 no, they'll just nod at me. Yeah, I got you. But he's like the I got you. villain and it's cool. principles. And so what I'm saying... You And here's why I don't get mad at a lot of... I don't get mad at a lot of people over this. Because... I know people in my family and people in my inner circle that are friends and stuff like that. Pick up the phone and I'll be like this. Who the hell you think you're talking to? You think <laughs> I don't know? I said, I can't say X, Y, and Z. How do you not know this and you know me? <laughs> my bad, my bad. Well, then what the fuck you asking me for? Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, you call me, why did you say this? Because I can't. Right, right. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to violate that code. Mm. That has nothing to do with something. Like, for example, you can sit up there, I'm famous. Stay off the weed and all of this other <laughs> shit, right? I'm not talking about just anybody. I got family members, friends, people mm. smoke some weed, okay? Please. You're on the streets, that's what you do. Had at least most of us. The point point is, is that I'm talking about the cats that has cost them money. Mm -hmm. So if I'm sitting there and I bring up something like that, right? And then you high as shit. You walk by the scorer's table, I can smell you. Yeah, 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 you yeah, you yeah. wobble it around. Sam you know, Perkins. coach is making a call. Coach is making a call. I got, I, Everybody knows I, Sam. Please, please. Yeah. There are worse examples. He's a blogger. There are far worse examples. But the point that I'm trying to make, I love my man Sam. I'm glad you brought it up. I miss him. I can't wait to see him one of these days. But let me tell you something. You can see these guys, and they wobble, and they can't understand plays. And it's not many, not most. I'm just talking about a handful of people. You'll see something like that, right? I'll write a story. Now, this is how I'll handle it. Maybe they dribble out the clock now, and game one in the what finals. The hell? <laughs> I was thinking the same. This, this, this <laughs> how, this, this how I, I'm saying this is how I'll handle it. Yeah. I'm not going to dime them out. I'll be like this. This brother shot three for 23 last night. He made this mistake, this mistake, this mistake. Now, I don't know what the hell he was doing last night. But... Mm. Uh, right? Because that's me letting you know. I know what the fuck he was doing last night. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is so good. Okay, wait. How much, so how much warfare exists where, like, <laughs> do you ever have a GM or assistant GM or somebody or even a coach give you information on an opposing team that they're playing, hoping that you run with it? Yes. And how are you... Filtering out all the information so you're not affecting the game the, or someone else. The ultimate, first of all, that's not my concern at all. I could care less whether I'm affecting or not affecting a game. What I care about is the veracity of the information. How truthful is it? If the information is true, you do your digging, you find out whether it's true or not, et cetera, et cetera, you go from there. Now, if this person leaked this information to me, you might not know who it is if you're the opposing team. But if you read the information you or listen to me, you can use your imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that damn person gave Stephen A. this information. That's why he said this shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, they get furious, and then all of a sudden, they come back with something. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's happened many times. I've had, I, I have been used as the instigator of wars between teams, players. Ooh, 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 I'm not telling you that. I'm not telling you that. What I'm saying to you, though, is that it doesn't matter. What mattered was, it's not that they were using me and that's it. It doesn't matter. Is the information correct? Mm. Now, if you lying, no, you can't do that to people. You got to make sure you hold that information. Matter of fact, you got to go back to that cat and be like, you lie to me. You lie to me one time. Mm. I'm going to roast your ass. Mm. You ain't going to get, you don't lie to me. Don't use me like that. But you can use me for the truth anytime you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But don't really use me for a lie. And I will decipher whether or not it's material I want to use or I don't want to use. And I'll go back and forth. And the objective is to be humane and to be fair. I've got people, I've had people over the years, not recently, but I've had people over the years giving me personal information about cats. They ain't had nothing to do with their, their play on the field or court. I look at them like, what you telling me that for? 
Mm. But that's violating. What you doing that for, man? Why, why would you do that? What if he did that to you, man? Because you ain't innocent. Why would you do that? Mm. Scratch that shit. Go to somebody else for that. I ain't doing that. I don't play that game. Come to me with basketball or football or baseball. Or, you know, I ain't doing no damn hockey or NASCAR. That's true. <laughs> but come to me. Come to me. Come to me with some stuff that's relevant to the sport. You don't want gossip. Don't come to me yeah. with people's personal. Like, listen again. I, I don't gossip. know y'all. They come to me with something about your personal life. Go someplace else with that. Mm -hmm. do you I don't play any, that game. Do you have any obligation to the players if the organization is trying to, like, tarnish their value? Yeah. No. Really? No. The obligation is whether or not it's true. You might say something about the player, and it might be damaging to the player. Yeah. And I will make the determination whether I want to use that intel or not. Mm. But I don't owe it to either side to use it or not to use it if it's true. Wow. If it's true, then I'll use it. Depending mm. on what it is. Mm. Now, if you telling me this dude ain't playing well, he playing like shit because he in the locker room, he's a locker room cancer, he's arguing and fighting with players, he's doing this, he's doing that. That's different. All game. Mm. You start telling me, ah, oh, it's because he having an affair or because he doing that. No, now that's your family. That's your wife. That's your relationship. So that's you're violating. The, that's what you violate. Yeah, that's yeah, crossing yeah. the line. Oh, you know, he's doing drugs. Wait a minute. That's far deeper than something like that. I'm not doing that. You see what I'm saying? There's, a, there's lines that you don't cross. But what I deem in the boundaries are things that directly relate to the field and the court of play as it pertains to the actual game itself. You're in the locker room fighting with a teammate and then I see that you refuse to pass on the ball. You're talking about that, that's relevant. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You're in the locker room fighting with the, you know, you're in the locker room and you wasn't fighting in the teammate, but outside, you know, something else happened with the wives or something like that. No, that's crossing the line. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm not doing what that. About, what, okay, what about, sorry, I want to ask this real quick. There's a cool clip of you talking about Kobe cussing you out over voicemail. Yes. You said you and no, AI yeah, didn't yeah. talk for eight months. Yes. What's the craziest story you have of a player being upset with you for something you said and like some crazy shit happened that you're comfortable saying? No, I would, I would tell you I've told this story many times and I actually hate telling it now because I feel bad because I, I just reflect on it and know how wrong I was. Mm. But, you know, we were in Denver when Randy, Larry Brown, I think it's 2003, something like that. Larry Brown leaves for Detroit, 2003, 2004 season. Randy Ayers takes over. Randy Ayers takes over coaching in the 76s. He ultimately gets fired. Glenn Big Dog Robinson. Um, I thought he could have handled things better, whatever, whatever. I go on TV. I say what I have to say, blah, blase. And then next thing you know, they got a game in Denver. After All Star Weekend, mm -hmm. and I walk in the locker room, and Big Dog gets in my face. You know, motherfucker, I, I saw what the hell you said. You know, you ain't shit. You ain't this. You ain't that. Blah blah blah. He's talking, you know, smack to me and the whole bit. And I'm like, can I speak? He's like, what? You know, he said, you're no good, sorry ass, mf for blah blah blah. And I said, my turn. I said, I'm appreciate your honesty. Because I feel the exact same way about your sorry ass, you motherfucker. Well, fuck you think, blah, blah, blah. And we, <laughs> we get into it. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, he said, he said, man, you don't know who I am. He said, you don't know who I am. I'm from Gary, Indiana. I said, motherfucker, so is Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> so, so after all of that, so after all of that happened, after all of that happened. Yeah, nobody can claim Gary, Indiana, bro. Yes. bro. MJ ruined so, so. So after all of that happened, after all of that happened, you know, we, we never spoke to each other again the whole bit. And then years later, I just felt really bad because I saw him talking about it. And I was like, and then Randy Ayers and others got on me because they were like, let it go, let it go, let it go. And I was like, they right. And then I saw his son. Mm -hmm. And his son was in the league. And he was such a nice kid and everything. I didn't want his son looking at me talking on TV every day, thinking that one day if I spoke about him, it was going to be because of his father. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, I, you know how you just look at somebody and it's like an epiphany hits you? This is all my fault. That brother was a basketball player. Whatever he felt about Randy is, he felt about Randy is. Whatever he felt about his teammates, he felt about his teammates. He has that right. He was in that locker room. He was a star player formerly at Purdue and then in the NBA. I wasn't. 
you know, he was that dude. And the fact of the matter is Glenn Big Dog Robinson could ball. Mm -hmm. And the people that you spoke to, most of them felt he was a really cool brother and they didn't feel the way that I felt about him at the time. So I was like, this son, there must have been something good about him. The fact of the matter is, and I don't want his son feeling this way. So I walked up to his son when I saw his son and I was like, I was totally wrong. Your father was right. I said, I could have handled things better. So I'm the one sitting in this chair. Mm. It's my obligation to be the professional and the grown-up, and I didn't live up to my obligation. I want you to know that if I see your father, I'm going to apologize to him, and I want you to know you never have to worry about anything that happened with me and your dad being a reason why I would judge how you play or anything like that. I'm going to call it like I see it. But that's all you have to worry about with me. And I just felt that that was the right thing to do. And I, I still feel that way to this very day because it's on me. I'm the one that's sitting in that chair mm. and I should have handled it better. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because uh, you don't need to lose your hair anymore. It's just a fact, a fact of life. Right now, if you're losing your hair, it's a choice and you could step in. You could keep that shit with keeps. Simple as that and inexpensive. I might add. Keeps has got your back. It's got your scalp. It's got your ego. It's got your confidence. It's got all of that. And it is only recommended by the experts, okay? They got a personalized treatment plan that is recommended by a licensed medical provider and delivered straight to your door. With Keeps, you get the quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. Telling you if you need to get the refill reminders, all that stuff, they can easily do it for you. And the treatment plans are affordable. They typically uh, half the cost of pharmacy prices. Remember, prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash flagrant to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash flagrant to get your first month free. keeps.com slash flagrant. All right, guys, we're gonna take a break for a second because I gotta tell you about the number one thing that has changed my health Okay, my mood, my vibrancy, my energy, and it's AG1, athletic greens. I started taking AG1 because I hated taking pills and vitamins. And I want a supplement that actually tastes great, okay? This is the best option for easy, optimal nutrition out there. You take one scoop of AG1 and you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. Listen, sustainable routines are key. AG1 is my daily micro habit that makes it easy to absorb key nutrients, lead a healthy lifestyle, and feel my best no matter what the day holds. One scoop, one minute, once a day, every single day. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash flagrant. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash flagrant to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily Daily nutritional insurance. Now let's get back to the show. Now when you're in the chair, you have influence. Yes. And people know that you have influence and yes. they might want to take away your influence. That's what sure. we do to influential people. We yes. try to remove that influence. Yeah. Have Many they, have tried. Have they tried like, have they tried throwing ladies your way? Like, is it I, 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 like, me, like genuinely? Like me I, personally, I think so. Um, I think that there have been <laughs> several cities, look, Wait a minute. I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm not joking. I think there's several things. One time Miami, was, Miami, yeah, one Miami. Time was, no. <laughs> yes, Miami. <laughs> He's got the yes, Dolphins colors right yes, now. Dallas. Dallas. He's repping. Yes, He's yes, repping yes, right now. Dallas. Yes, Dallas. <laughs> yes, L.A. There have been times where... Dallas must be throwing you some ugly women the way you talk oh. about the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, they're Cowboys. They're throwing Cowboys. <laughs> Reverse Cowboys, they call us. <laughs> There's a lot of nice looking women. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Dallas is kind of nice. But I will tell you this, seriously, man. I, there have been times where it's... I'm like... 
I don't think I'm Godzilla. I think I'm a decent looking dude, but I ain't that damn good looking. Uh, this these women being a little too aggressive. Oh, there are times that I felt like that, and it was like it was during the finals one year, it was during the playoffs another year, and all of those cities that I mentioned, and I like nah, nah. You know, I'm saying no, I'm walking away. They were but you, no, not just that. You get to the you go going to the front desk, finding what room I'm in. Wow. I gotta change the name on my hotel. Hotel room, like yeah, I gotta go by, you know, I gotta go by, uh, you know, like like what, what is that? I'm, I got a brain, like hey, Steven, yeah, no, 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 like hell no, no, no I, gotta change, I gotta change it to Rumpelstiltskin or something. <laughs> I, I mean, it had to do something like that, but I had to like, yo, what the hell's going on here? There were you girls know, knocking on your hotel, room? knocking on a hotel door, trying to hook Pamping? up the whole bit. No, but it was like, <laughs> but again, I'm looking at them and they look pretty damn good, and I'm like. This Wait, is through me. the people this is, you're this is, looking. No, this is, no, I open the door. I said, this is me. This is me. I open the door. I open the door. I just didn't let him in. I'm a gentleman. I'm a gentleman. I'm a gentleman. I'm a gentleman. I didn't let him in. I didn't let him in. You got to reward them for their journey. I had to open the door. I mean, this is just respectful. I was being respectful. That's all. That's all. But the point is, is that that's what I did. You know? And I was like, I'm just looking at it. I'm like. This is ridiculous. It's a setup, right? It's fine yeah. as hell. And how? Why are you chasing, chasing? Nah. You Stephen and was, A. You Stephen A. Like, no, 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 no. And you dress now. nice now. Before now. it was the baggy, before, but now, before now, before <laughs> yo, it was with the bank. It, it was with the, the baggy. No, no, they didn't like they the baggy. Thought you, you, can't something. <laughs> you can't convince something. They thought you was hiding <laughs> something. <laughs> but the point is, but the point is, is that that's what they would do it, and I was like. This is too much. No, I don't look that damn good. I ain't that. I ain't. I, I ain't one of these superstar players. Oh hell no! I smelt the setup. And when you let me tell you, you want what will stop? What will stop me in my tracks real quick is when I think somebody trying to mess with my money. Mm. That's what I know how to police myself. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Yeah. Get your ass in your hotel room. Close that door. Refrain. Mm -hmm. Chill out. Stay you understand off what I'm the saying? pussy. There you go. <laughs> yes. 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 It's the, it's the one thing in my life I can't go celibate for, my money. Ooh. Yes, I can. Wow. Really? Yes, I can. Really? Yes, I but can. But that is wild that they're sending I don't, girls. Like I said, I don't know. I'm not saying that I'm coming That's from a position. That's humble I'm not saying I'm coming from a position of knowledge. I'm saying that I suspected it because I'm like, no. I'm not one of those dudes that, you know what, oh, I couldn't get a girl till I got on television. I've always been blessed. We know. I've, I've always Yo, been know. blessed. I'm good. I'm good. But the point is, is that despite being blessed in that regard, you know, in terms of women wanting, <laughs> instead of women wanting to meet me and the whole bit, I ain't, <laughs> never, had, I ain't never had these, I ain't never had no women come after me the way some of those women came after me. And I, I can tell you, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm one of those dudes you don't have to worry about on the road. Like, yo, you know, what's he doing? How he acting? Oh, hell no. Mm. No, 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 no. I guard myself like, like you know, like, 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 like I'm money in the safe. I'm, I don't play. You know, I I go out. It's with my inner circle. I don't just hang out. I'm going out. You know, if I'm with my girl, that's different. If I'm with my family or the people that I work Yo. with, that's different. I don't go to strip clubs. But I don't I don't I don't go to just parties by myself. Mm -hmm. I don't put myself in a position where I can potentially get exposed. Somebody slides some shit in your drink or whatever. Oh no 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 none of that. I but, got people around me at all times. But you know what's fucked up is like those girls found out about you and fell in love with you probably from their boyfriends watching you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, like their boyfriends are watching their show and then they're in the background doing some TikToks yeah. and shit and they're like, oh, he has a kind of nice yeah. voice. Yeah. And the dude didn't even fucking see it coming. Yeah. That's true. That guy's, that guy's, that guy's a playmaker, bro. That's, that's just an assist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lob. There's a slight issue with what y'all are not seeing. Okay. But that's just as important as what y'all are Y'all acting saying. like hold on, hold on. that's the case with a dude that's on television. That's usually the case, period, with any of y'all. Think about it. Think about how you've met somebody. Think about how somebody how somebody else has met your friend or whatever the case may be. You do have people that plot. You do have people that it's like, you know, you could you could have you could have a lady and she meet one of y'all and she's looking at you like, yeah. 
but she with you. Mm. Oh, it does happen. See, but a difference is it when does happen. At the hotel. And by the way, men are men. Men are men are obviously worse. Men are obviously worse because we see some shit we like. You understand? A lot of times, at some point in time or another in our life, we didn't care about who we were with. Mm. So we can't do, don't act like it's TV. It's mm. anybody. I, I literally, I never forget years ago, man. It was um, this was about 20 years ago. I went to a journalism conference. And I watch. <laughs> and I watch. <laughs> listen to me. Listen, a journalism, a journalism conference. This is a- and I watch two, I watch two people who I knew were married Get- go into their room together. Mm. Came out of the room. Went downstairs to meet their respective spouses who had just arrived. Hey, maybe they were journalism. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they were journalism. Journalism. That's one way. That's a word. That's a word to use for it. I'm just saying, it's like it doesn't matter, y'all. It doesn't matter. You're a man man or woman. Anything's possible. It doesn't matter what industry you in. It doesn't matter what's going on. And and when you are a journalist slash commentator pundit, whatever you connected to the fourth estate, which is the media and stuff like that, you see it all. Mm. You see it all. And I, I can't even begin to tell you the things that I've seen. It's, it's, it, it makes you scared to get married. Start makes you scared to get married. I mean, well, we're you already married. Late, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wait, what kind of crazy? What do you mean? Have, have, wait a minute. Are you telling me there have been like players' wives that have they've tried to throw you to bread basket? There are, <laughs> no, not me. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is that there are players <laughs> yeah. who have been traded because... They were with a teammate's wife. Oh, oh wait a minute. I are, heard about there the, are the... coaches. There are coaches. Oh, no. Who have traded players because tra- players was getting with somebody they would get with. There no. are, there are, there are, there, there are, listen, it happens everywhere. Y'all talking to me because I do sports, but the fact of the matter is sports, Wall Street, you could be in medicine, or, you know, somebody, the doctors and nurses working at the hospital. Look, man. Since Adam and Eve just been going on, stop acting like we don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're all married, bro. I, I never met anybody in you know my life. What? You know what? You marry? Mm-hmm. That's exactly the answer you should give. <laughs> Would you get married again? I've never, never been, been married. Never been married. Oh, that's right. You have kids, though. Yes. Two deals. Two, two daughters. daughters. Yeah. But would you get married once? Yes. Oh. Really? Yeah. I've done it all. He's been saying I've done them all. I've of. Wait, who I've, takes I've, down the most of the I've never heard you say that. I've lived a good life. That's all, folks. I've lived a good life. I've lived a good life. That's all, folks. I've lived a good life. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't. I, you know, I'm. I, listen, I'm not proud of the fact. I'm not proud of the fact that I've never been married, but I am proud of the fact that I didn't get married and not honor marital vows, not even come close to it. Right. At least I didn't do that. Yeah. So yeah. you know, I, I mean, there comes a point in time where you know you get sick. You know, you want somebody there to nurse you back to health. You come home. You you know you 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 yeah, you, you want somebody. That's the reason you get married. <laughs> you gotta have a significant other. You gotta have a significant other. You get about damn sure, hours. It, 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 it damn sure ain't because you have this overwhelming desire to be the most monogamous, monogamous person on the planet. No, you just get to a point where it's like you know I've been there, done that. You know, and it's cool. You know, I'm 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 told you. Son, this Son. overwhelming desire. You just wake up one more. Yeah, I, I need to be faithful today. <laughs> wake up, you wake up. I mean, listen, listen. Ah. I'm proud of any man. Yeah, any man. Yeah, that says. <laughs> I have found the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with, and I have zero interest in any other human being on the planet. That is a very, very special man. Yeah. Yeah. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Up until this point in my life. Oh, but you're getting there. You're no, no, no. I think, I, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm over all of that, man. Yeah. But I'm, I'm over, I'm over, over all of what? That. All the monogamous stuff or no, over no, all no, the girls? No, no, no. I'm over all. I'm over. Listen, I've, I've been, I've spent the vast majority even the, of my even life. Pinky got a boner. He's talking about it. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> no, I've, been, I've been, listen, man. Listen. No, no, no. Ever since, I would tell you, I'm 55. Yeah. Ever since I became. A dad, my life changed. Oh, really? Mm. Prior to that, mm. just reckless. It was, <laughs> it, 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 it was crazy. It, it was bad. 
It was bad. Wait, wait, wait. Just call it me Will Chamberlain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No. You put up Will? No, no, no. You were putting up no, Will? No, nothing it like that. It was in Philly. It was never like that. Nah, it was never. It he's was like never like. It was mean? never like that. But you know what it was? Yeah. It wasn't so much what I was doing because I was never that bad. Mm. It was what I wanted to do, uh. meaning that you know what I would be with someone and know there's no way. That I'm, this is going to last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because I'm going to want to be with someone different. Wasn't worth running around, all of that other stuff. Nah, you ain't doing that. But what yeah. you're doing is you're like, I have no intentions yeah, of being we, in this we, we long call term. Post you, you, you said, you said, <laughs> but, when, but, when, but once, once I became a father, the scary part is, is like, you know, you, especially when you got daughters, you like this. Damn. I don't want her to run into somebody that I was like. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You know, you start thinking about, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden, you know what but the word, all, 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 all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you sitting <laughs> right? there going like, you know what the word karma <laughs> means. Ka uh, yeah, yeah, You yeah, didn't yeah. know what it meant before then. Yeah, yeah. But now you're like, shit, I know what it means now. Karma was a stripper in D.C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, your, in your eyes. I was in New York. the nightclub with <laughs> <in> AI. <laughs> Toronto. That's <laughs> Toronto. I mean, you just, you're looking at all of that, you're looking at all of that, it's like, nah, you know. But but it changed. Changes and you know it's like you know you don't feel like you're doing anything wrong. You know you're single. You're not married. You don't have any kids, and you're very very honest. Look, I'm traveling 200 plus days out of the year. I'm not trying to settle down. But then you find somebody special and you want to be around them, but you still sense it's not going to last. Mm, All right. Yeah. So then it doesn't last, and mm. then you get with somebody else, and then that doesn't last, and it gets and you don't care. You, then you become a dad. And all of a sudden, everything you didn't care about, now it's an overload. You caring about that all the time. You like, Lord, please don't do this to me. Don't make, don't make them run into somebody like I was. Yes. Yes. And then you can sit yes. up there and you can look at a whole bunch of people that's much, much worse than you ever were. But the fact of the matter is you're thinking about you. And you're thinking about how you were. And you're like, shit, yeah. why did I do this? Why did I do this? Why did I do this? But you that? have daughters, right? Yes, that's what I'm saying. So but they won't know what it's like to doesn't to matter. See I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm yeah. trying to say. Yeah. I know. I yeah. knew how I was. I oh, knew yeah, how yeah. I thought. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. Threesomes a lot? Oh, no, no, no. No <laughs> comment. No comment. Triangle offense? I'm not, I'm not getting into all of that. Would you handle Phil Jackson? I don't get, I'm, not, that, I'm not getting into all of that. That's too personal? I don't, no, no, no. Of course it's too but damn personal. But I heard personal. you and Levy's just go, no. He was running boxing one. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing something. Not at all. Not at all. I sat up there. I, I, I sat up there and I was like, yo, nope. I'm chilling out. I mean, listen. Most people I've been around with all my life. I'm talking about my yeah. boys, my you know, my yeah. you know, my cousins, people like that. They were far more buck wild than I ever was. Yeah. But that didn't make me innocent. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know that. Okay. So when you become a dad, it's like shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is, this is the thing. I feel like when people talk to you, this is why it's exciting to talk about this kind of stuff, because when people talk to you for the first time, I'm sure they're always going like, here's my sports take. What is your opinion on it? You know what? Believe it or not, um, I try to make it very, very clear to people. That's what I do. That's not who I am. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's a lot more to me than That's that. why I like I talking like to me. I like to joke around. I, yeah. like to, I like to clown around. I like, And I love, I've always been one because I've grown, I was the youngest of six, got four older sisters. 90% mm. of my relatives are females, whatever. So I That's always- That's where the riz I, comes from. I, I uh, always yeah. love, yeah. I always love being around the fellas and just shooting the breeze. Yeah. Like yeah. being in a room filled with testosterone and yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. You know that It makes you feel free because it's had happened to me often. Yep. So when people get me around, it don't have to be about women all the time, but they ask me questions. Yep. I'm not running from anything. But that's the cool thing is like, because I feel like somebody as opinionated as you is going to have these same, it's not like you're just going to be opinionated about sports. It's going to be about politics. Mm. It's going to be about anything. relationships and so all these kind of yeah, things. Yeah, because that's how it is at home. Exactly. I mean, if yeah, we're being yeah, yeah. real about it, who goes home and just talk about what they do for a living? No. You really talk about a lot of things that are, that expand beyond that. And so for me, it's not something that I ever run from. And yeah. if you want to hear that, No Mercy, his podcast now, you yeah, go yeah, into yeah. every single topic. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I don't run from anything. Yeah, I love and it. I, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it just is what it is, and I'm just having a ball. It was one of those things I remember during the pandemic, right? Everything shut down, no sports going on. I'm like... I'm like, we about to find out if these motherfuckers can really talk for a living. Mm -hmm. And when you guys found a way to talk about not sports yeah. every day. Every day. Like, y'all are stupid. Listen, man, that shit wasn't intentional. 
We should have had time off. <laughs> Yo, that's <laughs> but we did it. But we did it. I mean, first everybody take, had time first off. Take it was, was you on, and nurses. First take was yeah. on every, <laughs> every day. Every five days a week yeah. throughout the pandemic, those two months where there was nothing but sports. That's why, let me tell you something. That's why Dana White, that's why he was such a salvation for us. Because oh, remember, he was talk about. no, he was pushing yeah, for, 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 for the sport to keep going. Yeah. And that gave us something to talk about. Yeah. That gave us something to talk about. It was and then him, the two people I'm most grateful to because of provide because they provided us sports during the pandemic was Dana White. And Michael Jordan's last dance. Bro, when yeah. the last Ooh. dance came yep. out, yeah. it couldn't have been a more perfect time. I remember there's a video of me somewhere. I was I, my wife is videotaping me without realizing it, and I'm explaining her the rules of how I'm gonna watch this show. Right. <laughs> and she's going, but what if I have any questions? I go, there are no questions. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching and this you got No, I mean, she's no. She asks fucking questions the whole time. Well, <laughs> Scotty Pippen, why is, it, right. why, is his, why is his wife dating somebody? Everybody. But but that was that was like this perfect. Okay, we you're older than me, but I'm still old enough to be at a time where it's like there were a few things on TV that everybody cared about. Right. And when the finals came around or the playoffs came around, that was it. Now there's, everybody's on TikTok, Instagram, there's a million different things that they can be distracted by. Okay. But when that fucking, uh, when that special came out, when that documentary came out, it felt like the world stopped, man. And if it was like, I don't, I don't know if like the world is organized in this way, I don't know if there's a higher power, I don't know what it is, but it was something like, hey, y'all are gonna fucking recognize Jordan's greatness. Mm. There's a reason these kids are wearing these sneakers, they never watched them play once. Yeah. And, I, was, I would even talk to young people about it, and they'd be like, oh, I see why you... Yes, mm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, but, you know, because so many of them are lost. So it's just so sad. Wait, wait, you know, wait, I mean, wait, wait, because wait. they want... They, listen, they talk about LeBron, they talk about these other players, talk about even Kobe, and then, you know, MJ. You know, better than MJ. No, they were not. Yeah. MJ was on another level, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, LeBron is universally respected. Mm-hmm. Mount Rushmore basketball, greatest small forward that ever lived, or gonna go down as all time greatest scorer in NBA history, all this other shit, all true. But you know something? He ain't six and zero in the NBA Finals mm -hmm. with six NBA Finals MVP. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, you know, you know, Michael Jordan doesn't have a choke performance on his resume. That's what you just call it what it is. Mm -hmm. Against Dallas, 2011, that was not LeBron's shining moment. That's just the truth. And then not only that, and I often use this. LeBron is universally and unquestionably highly respected. Jordan was feared. Mm, 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 he mm. scared the living hell out of you. You didn't want to go up against Jordan. You wanted no parts of him. And Jordan would do things to demoralize yeah. you in such a way that you didn't even want to think about going up against him again. I remember. This, I yeah. mean, the things that this man, the things that this man used to do to people, to opponents, it's unreal, man. And I'm like, I saw it. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah. They could talk to me. They could talk whatever they want till the cows come home. Michael Jordan's number one. LeBron's number two. Yeah. Oh, you know, LeBron number yeah. two. Yeah. Between two and three, between him and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay. I have a theory that Floyd Mayweather is the greatest great of all time, meaning he is greater at his skill of boxing than Stephen Hawking was at science. Okay. Then. It, I can live with that, but I don't know if I would call him the greatest fighter of all time. First of all, Floyd Mayweather is one of the greatest ever. Um, he's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant defensive fighter. His speed, his bass, his boxing savvy. He's just a savant. He's just something Genius. special. No question about it. But I got to look at the Sugar Ray Leonard's of the world. So you came up at a time where you're watching Sugar Ray. I watched Sugar Ray. I watched yeah. Pepino Cuevas. I watched Thomas the Hitman yeah. Hearns, Hagler, Mugabe, yeah. all of these cats. I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know um, uh, what's his name? Aaron Pryor, Alexis Aguilo, yeah. Salvador Sanchez Salvador before Sanchez. he died. I mean, yeah, 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 I mean, I come yeah, yeah. up with that era. Yeah, and yeah. I'm telling you right now, you can look at, of course, Ali Foreman, Frazier, Norton, mm -hmm. Shavers, all of these guys, mm -hmm. right? It's not just about your skill set. It's who you do it against. Your level of competition. Is it possible that he's so far beyond his level of competition that he made it look easy? Well, I think he did as a lightweight. 
When he went up to the welterweight division, not so much. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I mean, what, taking his, out Canelo his, his, the way the, he took well, out. Well, well he, he just gave him a boxing lesson, but to, Canelo was 22 years old. See, I remember That's that. That's an excuse, though. Well, I don't like this, well, like he's 22, he's well, too young. I will tell you this. Well, you know, you do have to take that into consideration. Like I had 100 no, no, fights. Well, let me explain. You have to take that into consideration when boxing is the issue. Now, if he got knocked on his ass, that's different. But when he simply got schooled, when you swinging a punch and Floyd is tapping you on your shoulder saying, I'm behind you, mm -hmm. that's a problem. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a skill like, you know, you... Well, we could credit Floyd I, with that. Of course, I am crediting. I'm saying he's a brilliant, brilliant boxer. Mm -hmm. You know, this Floyd knew how to move before you even threw the damn punch. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be a veteran to know how to overcome that. Yeah. You can't put a novice into the ring with Floyd Money Mayweather. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. He's going to school you. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is that if you want to make an argument on Floyd Money Mayweather's half, which I'm not summarily dismissing, yeah. I would tell you it's this. Floyd Money Mayweather was undefeated for the last half of his career with one hand. He oh, constantly broke right. his hand. Yeah. yeah. He constantly broke his hand. And so because he broke his hand, you got to give credit where credit is due. He would go into a ring knowing he had no shot at knocking somebody out yeah. because his hands were hurt too much yeah. and literally walked in the ring and said, I'm going to embarrass you and humiliate you by showing the world you can't hit me. Yeah. Wow, that's We insane. were in Jacksonville. He hit Arturo Gotti, beat the shit out of him, beat the shit out of him. <laughs> but we were in Jacksonville, Florida. Arturo. The Philadelphia Eagles were playing them on the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. And it was a week before, a few days before the, the, the game. And I go up to Florida, and I'm like, look, man, you know, this, shit, man, this, this is modern-day Rocky. You can't play around with Gotti. You, you got you to gotta take him out. You can't play. I'm just, I'm just telling you, we in the VIP section. Floyd grabs me, pulls me close to him. Ain't no motherfucker with six losses beating me. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever forget that. Yeah. I said, what? Music blaring, VIP section, we in the club, the whole shit. He said, I said, ain't no motherfucker with six losses ever beating me. Go. Watch. Yeah. So I said, fine, I'm going to be there. <laughs> Fight was in Atlantic City. Yeah. I flew back from Jacksonville, and I went to Atlantic City yeah. for the next week for the fight. And Floyd beat that brother Ooh, like he stole. Wow. It, it was bad. It was, it, was, it was a point in there. Roger Mayweather like, looked at the cameras like, Come, keep watching this ass whipping. Yeah. And Floyd hit that brother with like six in straight a, yeah. rights. I yeah. said, oh, my God, just yeah. picked. Yeah. Him apart. Yeah, that's yeah. insane. Just like he told me he was, was going to happen. do. Wow. There's a, my, my dad used to be a, a, a journalist. He would go to Ali's camp a lot. And um, he asked Ali before he fought Foreman, he's like, how the hell are you going to beat this guy? Remember, Foreman, that was when Foreman hit Frazier and lifted him off the fucking canvas that's with right. an uppercut, remember? Yes, yes. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, Ali told him, he goes, uh, you have to understand, like, I'm a scientific boxer. He goes, this, this new stuff, this is what you do. You go, you could be the best at this. He goes, but I'm the greatest ever at this. Right. And it is a science to me. And I have figured out how I'm going to break this guy down. Now, the irony is he went into the ring with that plan. And he was like, this shit ain't fucking working. I need to lay on these ropes. <laughs> but that's to the, great, that's to right. the greatness of Ali, for sure. Yeah. But there's certain guys that you can just... Well, it's funny you bring that up because I, I write about it in my book. That's my father's funniest moment. I've never seen my father laugh harder than when Foreman... Not Frazier upside the back of the head mm. for that final knockdown. I mean, it was just hilarious. You know, it was like my father. My father laughed about that until the day he died. Wait, I, mean, he just, just, I mean, it was fifty years. Then spanning fifty years, he still laughed at it until the day he died about how Frazier got knocked. Because he had never seen somebody get knocked upside the back of the head that way. Fra the foreman hit Frazier, and and foreman was menacing. You know, foreman was arguably the most menacing boxer in history. Yeah. People talk about Mike Tyson. Go back and watch, watch foreman, foreman and how yeah. foreman scared the living hell out of them. But when you think about brilliant boxers, yeah. Floyd's up there, Sugar Ray was, yeah. Ali, of course, the yeah. greatest, because who went through the adversity that Ali went through, of course. which is why we call him the greatest. Yeah. But Floyd's up there, he's in the discussion. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the question is, obviously Brady's retired. Yeah. And I think That's a lot of people are like, I think they're hesitant to be like, he's the greatest athlete ever. I think yep. he is. 
Do you think, first of all, the word athlete has no business in the same sentence as Tom Brady? It, because. In terms of, that wasn't what he was. He is an elite passer of the football and an elite football mind, which both contributed to him being the greatest quarterback ever. But he ain't the greatest athlete. That is not true. What makes you an athlete? Yeah. Well, speed, quickness, agility, um, along with various other skills that come along with the respective sport that you're in. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady didn't have those things. You know what? Mike Francesa, formerly of Mike and the Mad Dog Radio Show, they were on my show first take last week. And they had their, they had their reunion. And Mike Francesa made a very valid point. He said, I love Tom Brady. He's got the greatest quarter, resume as a quarterback ever. He's the GOAT, no doubt about it. No shade thrown on him. He said, but we need to understand he's not, he's not, he's neither the greatest regular season quarterback ever. That was Peyton Manning. And he said, nor is he the greatest Super Bowl quarterback ever. That would be Joe Montana. He said, those two quarterbacks, he said, you're talking about Tom Brady. Tom Brady was neither the greatest regular season quarterback nor the greatest Super Bowl quarterback. But that's 10 Super Bowls versus four. I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is that Tom Brady, say what you will. The fact of the matter is that was factually correct. Well, I, yeah, I would just disagree with greatest because it's not winning percentage to me. It is, it, you got to take everything into account. Number well, well, and well, 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 oh, well, then don't, then take everything, not just what you want to. Like, for example, you look at the AFC East. Mm -hmm. Well, the Jets, the Miami Dolphins, and the Buffalo Bills spent years being trash. They were a trash. joke. They were a joke. So you are automatic, you are an automatic top two seed in the AFC for years. Yeah. You guaranteed a home playoff game at Foxborough, mm, okay? Yeah. Most of the time, two games in AFC Championship Absolutely. games. So you got to take that into account, right? Yep. Then you got to take into account the first three Super Bowls Tom Brady won is because of that defense. Mm. New England. Bill Belichick coached defense. He obviously was the defensive coordinator before he became the head coach. Ty Law and McGinnis and the rest of the crew. Mm. The defense led the New England Patriots, not the Patriots' offense. They led, but the winning drive was always Brady. I understand and that. And that was every Super Bowl. Well, you could say that. Well, what about the losing drive? Because guess what? Uh, in the AFC Championship game, he couldn't could put together a winning drive against Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning had beat him. You also got to remember in the Super Bowl, Eli Manning beat him twice. Yeah, Eli got him twice. Okay, so you got to look at all of that. And by the way, he should have lost to Seattle if Pete Carroll and Daryl Bevel didn't call the stupidest play in NFL history when Marshawn Lynch is running, wreaking havoc over the New England Patriots, gets you to literally the half-yard line, and they decide to have Russell Wilson throw a pass over the middle that gets intercepted by Michael and Butler at the half-yard line. Yeah, yeah. This is what they did. He should have lost that Super Bowl. He was down 28-3 to against Atlanta, but... Matt Dan Ryan Quinn took, yeah. and Kyle Shanahan decide not to run the football and throw the damn football so an incomplete pass stops the clock, which gave New England all the time in the world to come back and erase the 25-point deficit when they were supposed to run the damn football. So there's a lot of things and that you And Matt Ryan to. took that sack that took them out of field goal range that ended up letting New yes, England come back. So correct. all that I get, but again, to me, overall encompassing 10 Super Bowls is crazy. That's yes. more than every team ever. Well, nobody's saying he's not the GOAT. They're just saying that you can be the GOAT without being the best regular season or the best Super Bowl quarterback. Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying. They still call them okay. the GOAT. Yeah. They're saying, but he's not the greatest regular season quarterback and he's not the greatest Super Bowl quarterback. But the athlete conversation is, I, I thought there's an athlete as someone who plays a sport because the best athlete is probably some CrossFit guy, but we're not going to call That's them fair. the greatest That's athlete. That's fair. I get where you're coming from, but I guess what I'm saying is when we look at a respective sport mm -hmm. and we marvel at the greatness of a player, yeah. It's not usually it's usually because of what they do, that's true. But when you say athlete, you take into consideration a multitude of things. Primetime Deion Sanders is the greatest cornerback that ever lived. Yes. But damn, could he play wide receiver. Yeah. And damn, could he return punts and kickoffs yeah. too. Yeah. And damn, when he got into the open field, you could pick the fastest dude out there. They had no shot of catching him, yeah. which is how he came up with the dance. Because yeah, yeah. he could afford to dance because there was nobody on his heels. Yeah, yeah. Because he would just run away from the crowd. Yeah. Because that's how lightning fast and quick primetime Deion Sanders was. There's a multitude of things. Bo Jackson, baseball yeah. and football. And you sort of versatility of his skill set and the repertoire that he had available to him. You looked at that. Caitlyn so Jenner won a men's decathlon as a woman. That's amazing. Okay. Think about oh, that. That's impressive. I'm that's not pretty going crazy. Yeah. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wasting my time with that. He's I'm like, the mouse is watching. watching guys. <laughs> <laughs> so then maybe the greatest athlete of all time is Usain Bolt. 
Okay. Because everybody in the world has run straight. Not everybody's played baseball. Not okay. everybody's played basketball. Well, you could say he's the fastest man, but again, I said versatility when I came when it came to athletics. I didn't say speed. I said versatility. So you say you saying Boat, I'm you talking speed. I'm talking versatility. So Bo Jackson runs, you know, runs over. I hear what you're you know, saying. runs yeah, over yeah, these guys yeah, when yeah, he plays yeah, baseball. Yeah, yeah. Dion was playing baseball. Dion yeah. played baseball and football as well. So the who's versatility. Your number, one? number one athlete of all time. Yeah. A lot of people try to say Jim Brown because he played football and lacrosse. lacrosse yeah. Apparently um, he was amazing at lacrosse. He, he, he was. They it's said the he was amazing at lacrosse. I'm going to tell you it's a cross between primetime Deion Sanders and Bo Jackson. Mm. Oh. Mm. That's me. Mm. In terms of athleticism. Yeah. Um, if you want to tell me LeBron, because I can imagine LeBron on a football field. What about Tiana Trump? Because a lot of people don't include <laughs> her. I don't know her. Amazing <laughs> skill set. Amazing skill set. No one talks about diversity. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't she know. She's knocking at your hotel room yeah. one day. You never opened the door one time? <laughs> huh? Open the door, say hello. It's very nice to meet you. Sorry, not interested. Wrong Have a nice room. evening. I'll make sure I get look my room service. Look at the people service. one time? Make my room service. No, no, look at the people. I open the door. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do uh, the movie Underdogs? No. You didn't do that, the Snoop movie? No. I wish Snoop had called me about that one. I, thought I heard you're in it. Aren't you in it? I am in it, but I thought you were supposed to be in it. No. There's like cameos from... If they did it, I don't know about it. Oh, I yeah. might have to make a phone call to <laughs> Uncle Snoop. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's the dude. But That's the, my dog right there. Yeah, but the you price... You play the Stephen A. in the film. Well, no, it's more, it's more skip. skip. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought yeah. that was cool what you said about skipping your book, man. About what? Yeah. Yeah. Just about like that he is this person. A lot of and that you appreciate people who are like that. Right. Like you would rather somebody stand on their opinions, even if they're wild, than somebody just say a wild thing for reaction. Yeah. That's skip. That's skip. I think that he's authentically himself. Um, I don't think he's a phony or anything like that. I'm gonna always have love for him because I wouldn't be where I am in my career today if he hadn't pushed for me to be on first take. So he knew it. One, he saw he's, something. Well, he we both saw it. It's just that he had he was in a position at that time to help make that happen, um, and he definitely pushed for it. We don't always agree, obviously. That's why we had a successful debate show yeah. and all of that stuff. There's things that he has said and done in his career that I would have done differently. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I'm eternally grateful to him uh, for the role that he's played in my life, yeah. and I will never allow anybody to think otherwise in terms of how I feel about him. Okay, I know you got to go, so I don't want to take too much time, but sure. I, I am, why is it, why are sports so important to us? You've been around sports your entire life. You know it more, probably better than any other human being. Why is it so important? Because why does it elicit this emotion? Why do I cry when I watch a fucking documentary? Because like, I think it's an escape from this fucked up world that we live in. Even though, like for example, you notice how frustrated people get when politics, social issues, and all of this other stuff infiltrate sports. Yeah, because we're like, we no, are leaving that a, to have this. Right, right. And you get very upset when it intervenes. There's a reason for that, because mm. sports has been utilized as an escape for so long. But my response to that is, that's only because folks weren't paying attention. Mm. Society has always infiltrated sports. Think about the civil rights era and think about the athletes that took the positions that they took. That's why they were famous. Think mm. about Muhammad Ali with the Vietnam War and refusing to enter the armed services. Think about Jim Brown and Bill Russell and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Think about Kurt Flood fighting for free agency. Think about uh, Jackie Robinson and Larry Doby oh, you know, integrating the sport of baseball. Throughout history, Things that have not, that supposedly didn't have anything to do with sports, ended up having everything to do with sports because what the athletes and the sports world was showing you is that we still have to live in the society once the games stop. And these folks come to the games and they bring that stuff with them. They might cheer 
for you if they're rooting for you. But what about the Philly, Philadelphia Phillies manager that was denigrating Jackie Robinson with racial epithets and all of this other stuff while he was up at the batter's box and calling them all types of names and everything like that? Because when you have people rooting against you, they can do anything to you. We look at Naomi Osaka right now, and they, she's playing tennis, and then you've got people clamoring for folks to stop booing or stop reacting or whatever because they see her get so emotional. And then the issue of mental health and all of this stuff comes to the forefront. We're constantly seeing things invading the sports world because the athletes come from those worlds and they have to deal with it as well. So why act like it doesn't exist? Especially if you're not compromising the game to do it. See, to me, there's no excuse for getting in the way of the game. You Colin Kaepernick, you can protest. I defend him all the time from the standpoint, listen, he took a knee, he did this, he did that, but guess what he didn't do? He didn't get in the way of kickoff time. Mm -hmm. He let the, the games were being played. Mm -hmm. So when I'm arguing with conservative hosts and stuff like that and they're talking about these things, I say he didn't get in the way of the game. He's an American citizen. He has every right to do what he did. He didn't violate any laws. He didn't violate any of the sports tenants or anything like that. He's just taking this position, which is unpopular to some, which is popular to others. That's the world that we live in. And so when you see sports... Even though it's supposed to be an escape, and that's why people clamor to it and gravitate to it, I like the fact that societal issues sometimes infiltrate sports because it's a reminder that even though life can be beautiful and it can be a game, life ain't all about games. Mm -hmm. It's about life. Right. So let's deal with all of that while we still manage to play games. Right. Stephen A. Smith, ladies Ooh, and gentlemen. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate, appreciate you. Yo, Make sure you bro. check out uh, the book. Get the book, Straight Shooter. Check out the podcast. No mercy. You're the fucking man, dude. I appreciate Thank it, man. So I had much, a lot of fun. Y'all are crazy, man, but I love it. <laughs> I love it. I like it. I like it. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. I don't want to keep harping on the fact that, you know, shifty man should get hit by a car while riding his bike, have his phone destroyed, and definitely shit his pants down to his calves and still ended up in the Apple store and took an Uber pool home. That's crazy. I don't want to harp on this. But if you are somebody that has had a bout of bad luck like that, listen, if you're somebody who's slipped and fallen in a store, hurt yourself, but hasn't gotten that compensation that you deserve, I think it's Morgan & Morgan that you need to talk to, okay? If you're injured, you check out Morgan & Morgan. Okay, Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers. With over 15 billion, that's a B, billion dollars recovered for their clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record for fighting to get you full and fair compensation. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy, it's more like using an app than hiring a lawyer. Submitting a claim to Morgan & Morgan is like ordering takeout. Okay, it's not like hiring a lawyer. It is the most simple, easy thing that you can do. So with Morgan & Morgan, you submit that claim without ever having to leave the couch. And if you really fall and busted your ass in that store, you might not be able to, okay? In eight clicks or less, you submit that claim to Morgan & Morgan. Now, if you're injured, you check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. Think about that. A lot of you are injured. You don't understand how this injury law works. You go, oh my God, I don't even know if I can afford a lawyer. They're free, okay, unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash flagrant or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. That is F-O-R thepeople.com slash flagrant or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. Let's get back to the show. Guys, stand-up comedy update. I've booked a show. I have booked a show August 27th, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, okay? I'm coming. We're doing the Great Outdoors Festival. Prince Island Park is going to be wild. If you're from that area, you already know what it is. 5,000 people. If you're not, maybe you want to go check it. But that is the first show that I've booked. So make sure you go get those tickets. TheAndrewSchultz.com will have a link up on the website. Go get them. Right now is the first show that I've booked. I'm very much looking forward to it, Calgary. We had a show locked in for the tour before, but we had to cancel it. So hopefully we see all you guys out there. I'm excited, and uh, I'll see you soon. Peace. And we're back. Uh, awesome having Stephen A. on. Uh, thoughts, guys? 
It was, he was so fucking cool. I thought just, hearing Stephen A. cuss is great. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he's a little intimidating, but just cool as fuck. No acknowledgement of the cowboy stuff. Bro, that was he, so yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was laughing before. He saw me, <laughs> shook my hand, and like I was dressed normally, and then just kept talking about everything that was happening as if I wasn't, he saw me, he was like, hey. How you doing, young yeah, man? Nice yeah. to meet you. That's all he gave me. He must have seen the pod before. He saw how you dress. He's like, oh, yeah, this is this yeah, is regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you were in here for an hour dressed like fucking Woody. And Son, he never yeah. said I a swear word. to God, I was like, do I take these stupid you ass right. things off? I'm dumb, this, man. dumb fake boots that weren't even real. And just asking him honest questions like, so how did that affect your career? And the whole time he didn't say a I word. I swear to God, I was asking serious questions. Like, I can't believe I'm wearing these fucking boots asking these questions. <laughs> but you committed to it. You never, you you never were like, Because oh, it would have been distracted because they had to it was like a five minute process getting yeah. it on. That's what I saw the strap on the shoe. And I was like, oh, he's locked into this yeah. thing the whole episode. Also, we're all assholes for never bringing it up. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, he's the cowboy. No, it was funnier that way. Way funnier that way. Way funnier that way. Way funnier that way. Way funnier that way. Yeah. Way yeah. funnier that way. He's a force, man. Son. Yeah. I'll say you guys over there by the bathrooms. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's an been, interesting he's take. Been at the top doing what he's done for. Forever. Yeah. 100%. Did you get a little nervous asking a question? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw Al ask a question. He was like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> taking a picture with him right now at the end. I was like, tomorrow I'm going around him. Like, I've, not, I've never once I've questioned never that shit ever. so it's stupid around I'm another sorry. man in my life. Bro, this is so hey, funny. Hey, watch out. Yeah. <laughs> You're normally collecting. You see this was guy. Was there on. anything you wanted to ask him that you didn't ask him? Um, What, like, when he's long and gone, what does he want his legacy to? Uh, yeah, I want to know what he wants to be known. At. I mean, obviously, this is gonna be this is gonna be the most fucking blatantly obvious observation, but uh, but yeah, he he's just such an amazing he's such an amazing talker, but also builds this incredible momentum. Yeah, mm. like when he gets going, yeah. you don't want to you don't want to break it. Yeah, yeah, because you're 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 entertained. Yeah, it's like entertaining when he gets on a roll. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just what a great skill. But I'm glad we talked about uh, things that weren't sports with him as well. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think everybody naturally is just going to try to do the sports stuff, but you know that he was getting in him. Yeah. <laughs> we, we talked about the things that got in him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to ask, but then he said I wasn't as wild as some people. I want to say... You and Irvin, when y'all trade stories back in the day, <laughs> whose stories are crazy? Oh, nobody fucking yeah. Irvin. Right? But then he was no, like, he, that's what he said. Like, I'm not as wild as some people. I was like, okay, he told me right there. But I think, but I, I wanted to ask. I think he gets more pussy than some players. God, I mean, that's yeah. so funny. Like, he's actually more famous than, you know, like, Rogan. This is why Rogan's a good comparison. Like, Rogan's more famous than every fighter. Mm -hmm. He's the most famous person in the arena when he's calling the fight. That's so funny. Yeah. And yeah. Stephen A is more famous than most, most basketball players. players. Yeah. 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 If you're not a perennial all-star, perennial, Stephen A more famous. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And Isn't then built wild? it from nothing and then left ESPN. I don't know who let go of who, but then to come back and then take that bitch over. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, he's fire. Okay, what do we got, Mark? What are we talking about? You want to talk about Tom Brady's second retirement? Mm. Sad, 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 sad day. Okay. I was asking Charlemagne about this, and I'm curious what you guys think. Like, do you do you really think that he threw away his marriage for one more year? That's the narrative that's out there. My suspicion is the marriage was already shaky. And, and he was like, I'm not going to sacrifice playing another year for something I don't think I can salvage. Like, I want to play another year. I'm not going to not do that. And then we get divorced anyway. Yeah. I, I can't fathom that they had the best marriage ever. And because he wanted to play one more year, they're like, no, it's done. Yeah, I wanted him to keep playing for that reason because it cost you your marriage. But then I thought about it to your point. And I was like, oh, probably he retired. And then he was like, the fact that I, want, I don't want to be here anymore probably means we're done. Like, if I'm that willing to go back to football, mm. that lets me know we can, uh, me not having football and just being with you, it's not working. So I think oh. he went back to football knowing it's probably going to cost me my marriage, but it's not what I thought it was. Yeah. And she probably said the same thing. Having him home is probably not what I thought it was. Are they fully divorced? Divorced, full. Yeah. Settled everything. Right. Oh, it's settled? Yeah, her, her good days are... <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. She's still cooking. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, son, I don't know if you've seen the recent pictures. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop still it, stop the mother it. of the kids, bro. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. My bad. <laughs> now, she was down in, uh, in Costa Rica in Santa Teresa. Yeah. Where we went. Oh, you met, you saw her. No, I didn't see her, but okay. she goes down there a lot, apparently, okay. like, and she was down there with the trainer or something. All these girls get with the trainer. 
What is up with that? Trying to make sense. Why? Because it's someone that's got authority. They typically look good. And on top of that, you're doing hard work together. Yeah. That's going to make your makes brain you feel fuse. better every time. Endorphin release every time you see this guy. Yeah. Caused by him. And so he makes you're feeling your best when you're around him. Yeah. And he's good looking. Testosterone all over this man, all up in this man. Yeah. It makes sense to me that you hook Just up with doing the trainer or the bodyguard. And they already broke that barrier because, like, oh, the, the touching yeah. barrier. Physical. So it's like, it's yeah. physical. Yeah. That's so why you got to be like a eunuch. That's what they did back in the day, right? What yeah. they do back like, in the like day? Like, if you were like a fucking apprentice to the queen or whatever, they chopped your balls off. So, oh, like, that makes more sense. I thought the trainers back in the day had no balls. Yeah, but like, that's Whoa. what we need to do now. Yeah, if but they needed testosterone. Why do you need testosterone? Like, the, push like Grey Worm in Game of Thrones. You know yeah, what I mean? exactly. Well, because I'm not going to listen if you don't got testosterone. If you look like a eunuch, I'm not going to take your advice on fitness. Why not? It'd be like Yoda. Like, Yoda's not the most fit guy. That's but true. I wouldn't Trust take Yoda's him. advice. If Yoda was training you, you, no. you, would, you wouldn't listen to him? No. He's wise. He would be Anakin for He's sure. He's not one with the force. <laughs> yeah, I'm not one with the force, bro. Darth Vader for I'm, sure. I'm uh, Harrison Ford. <laughs> Miles, what did who is Harrison Ford? <laughs> What's his name? Hansola. Han Solo. Han Solo. Han Solo. Yeah, okay. I don't need that little fucking force shit. Yeah, but you're a guy also. That's Bang. the thing. If some, if there's a, if there's a guy, I guess I wouldn't even want a guy training my wife in the first place. It's yeah, guy, I don't guy want a guy training my wife. Sorry, man. You, it's a segue, but you might respect this as an actor who doesn't really like doing his lines. Uh. There's a scene in one of those Star Wars where Princess Leia says, "I love you." And Han Solo goes, I know. He was supposed to say, I love you too, and something mushy. And Harrison Ford was like, my character ain't, this is no bitch, he ain't saying that. Mm. So she goes, I love you. And then he just goes, I know. And then they get frozen or whatever the fuck. Oh, really? Which I thought you might respect Yo, as an improv. Han Solo a legend, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Harrison Ford a legend. What you would know, Yoda have done? Oh, that's a good question, dude. He's spoken in a riddle or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, some yeah. Low yeah. shit. But you something too, wise, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But be honest, your girl comes home, she's like, oh, yeah, I got a trainer. We're doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. It's this guy. And then shows you a picture of some handsome strapping guy. Nope. Yeah. I mean, my girl does have a male trainer. But if it's a group setting, that's fine. Nah. <laughs> yeah, it's just one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, you got to do something. Yeah. I do have to do something yeah. about that, you right? You got to quit comedy when you're 44. That's what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, might yeah, be a good yeah, ass yeah. idea. You got six years. Fuck. But you also don't want, you don't want her to get out of shape or you don't want to, like, discourage her. You know what I mean? If she's yeah. having a lot of fun with fitness, you don't want to disrupt the whole well, thing. Well, now she's, she is a female trainer, but I like that. See, there you go. Yeah, that's, yeah. Good. There you go. that's good. Make sure she's straight, though, because if she's gay, it's even more. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah that's Oof. risky. I'll way rather a, a male trainer than a gay female trainer. Wait, yeah. why? Because a gay female trainer knows how they got the riz, bro. Son, you want she Sam, got the riz Sam J being your fucking... Train her up. Bro. <laughs> Train her up. She's going to come with all that therapy shit and she'll be like, oh, oh my yeah, God. yeah, yeah, I don't care. Because <laughs> he tells you your value comes I, from him. I don't care. You're, I see I your care. value beyond him. I don't care. I don't care. It not, it not going to do nothing to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't, I don't believe this. I, nah, he's right. He's trying to talk it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk it to so existence. Yeah, 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 no, 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 I don't care about that. Oh, no, no. I, you, you're saying that she's going to, oh, I thought she's trying to hook up with my girl. She's trying to just sabotage our relationship for nothing? Yeah, she's trying to hook up with your girl. I would say try. All right. <laughs> Why? You don't even mess with I don't want anybody not, to oh, try. No. Yeah. But like, if, I don't care. Like, even if they did, I wouldn't, I don't know. You know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't care that much. Like, okay, I don't now, know. now we're talking. Now it's a whole really different ball game. That I, don't, is, I wouldn't care that much, yeah, I don't think. Like, no, like, yeah. I listen, yeah. I, ideally it's not that, but if I had to choose between, like, a guy or a yeah, girl. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, bro. I don't know. Oh, come on. You would, you would rather, you just agreed with me. Yeah, no. but then he put it a different scenario. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm all down. Then he was just talking about fitness. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He was just talking about fitness. Okay. Fair. I'm just saying, someone having sex with your wife, you would rather it be a girl than a guy. Oh, yeah, sure. But I think the girl would take, if you get a female trainer, it's not just sex. She's taking that girl emotionally from you. Mm. Have her for a little. <laughs> Take a weight off your shoulders. Give me some PTO. Yeah. Yeah. Call her time off. Go call your girl. Go call your girl. Take that shit up with her. Every day. Yeah. That might actually work out. So. I think, yeah, them Muslims got it, bro. Because <laughs> like, they could be upset. They upset about the same shit. Yeah. Y'all should talk this out, really. Yeah. Like, you're, you, she's going, oh, you don't spend enough time with me because you're with her. And it's like, you know who could really relate to this? <laughs> mm -hmm. Work that amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's something to this. Yeah, I think so. Like, I don't even know if they really hate each other like that. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I, I think that they, they're, like, competitive, but they don't hate each other. Mm. It's like F1 drivers. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, they're all trying to jockey for positions. It's like Brady and Manning. Yeah, exactly. But they don't hate. They, they relate yeah, the they, most. Yeah, 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 they get it. They fucking know the life. It's like presidents. 
You know how like all presidents just hang out with each other because they're the only ones who know what it's like? Yeah. Mm. That's what it is. <laughs> Y'all some presidential pussy. <laughs> You know what I mean? Talk about that that's life together. Yeah, that's no, high, right? right? Like, that's it. I quite like that. I don't, I'm gonna be I don't wanna deal with that stress. Presidential. I don't wanna deal with that stress. That seems like too much stress, but <laughs> you having, you'd having rather a fucking dude over a girl? Come me on, with your bro. wife is Come crazy, on. bro. I thought I would. Y'all making me question myself now. Yeah. Okay. You should question I'm yourself. Gonna, I'm gonna commit, but y'all really making me feel insecure about my decision. So. How the fuck are you so secure about it that you're cool to guy? Yeah. That's a trainer guy. Man, I don't know, bro. I just think the girl's <laughs> gonna get in there more deeply. So what is wrong with you, bro? You just agreed with me. Yeah, but then he made way I don't more know what sense, you was bro. Thinking about, bro. I know I was bugging. That was, I was one bugging. of the craziest I was things. Bugging. Up. I was bugging. Yeah. yeah, you see? Okay, I was bugging too. <laughs> there we go. Finally. Get off me. Yeah, that's all we need. That, there we go. Thank God. But yeah, all that to say, I don't think him going back for another season actually like ended it. I think that was the the beginning of the end. I don't even know what we talking about Him, right Tom now. Brady, <laughs> Tom, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Tom Brady, yeah. I was like, who's going back for another season? <laughs> I have no clue. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's the thing that ended it. There's yeah. no fucking way. I think it's like when you're, all your kids move out and then you realize like what you have in your relationship. Yeah. I think this is the same thing. Like yeah. he gets done with his career and he goes, okay, where's our relationship at? Yeah. Not in a good place. So I don't think it was the one additional season. I think it was the 20 seasons before that that slowly eroded things away and other yeah. communication issues. Or them 20 seasons held it together. And then when it was finally home, <laughs> he was that's like, it, you yeah. know what? This sucks. Well, that's, we suck together. That's the thing. It's like she's got her career. She's making crazy money. Yeah. So she's busy. She got a full time job. She's busy as fuck. She's flying around the world doing all this fashion shit. Okay. He's got his career. He's busy as fuck. You're the quarterback. Yeah. Right. And he he was more obsessive than everyone. Of course. All year. So it's like there's no time. Yeah. Think about how little time we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no way they have time. Yeah. Right. So of course you get along. Mm-hmm. Of course you think you do. Oh, two. Good-looking people that see each other once a month? And have children together? Oh, my God. (laughs) How do you manage that? (laughs) Right? Of course you're going to be able to keep the marriage together. And then, like you said, the second you stop playing... So we're together too much. This don't work. AB stay at their house for a while? Yeah. He's he's implied some crazy shit. We should have known that marriage is over. Like... You having some other dude just come That's to the what I'm grave? Saying. Like, yeah, AB is a wild one. You having a wild dude come live with us so you can win the championship? Yeah. Our children Wait, are here, yo. What's you know going how, on? I'll show you number one. I have like guys over because then like she just has to do everything and oh. we just have the fun. Like, yeah. 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 That's why Miles couldn't live with me, okay? That's why. I mean, yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. When you're no, married, you're just you got a domicile. Shit. You got a domicile. Yeah, yeah. You can't disrupt that. Yeah, right? Miles, that's too much testosterone. That's what I'm saying, in. dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah Miles that's coming fine. in. He's going to fuck up the whole thing. He's going to ignore your wife completely. <laughs> <laughs> so Miles wild, comes dude. over, your wife is probably like, thank God. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Someone yeah. I can talk to. Yeah. That's honestly true. That's honestly a great point. Um, did y'all see Last of Us? I haven't seen it yet. Did you, you see it? Not the new one. I'm watching tonight. I am caught up, though. We need more. I'm caught up finally. I needed more of that episode. I told you. I just... needed more from that. It was too short. It was like a 45 minute episode. Oh, well, they gave us an hour and 20 last time. So I, I kind of like when shows fuck with times, though. I think because each is... episode is a piece. Yeah, but this is the, the director did this episode and the next episode. Mm. Oh. So I think they basically shot a movie with him. Okay. And they just chopped it in half. Okay. Uh, so I hope It does feel chopped. Yeah. yeah, it does feel like. Yeah, there was wasn't like, like a where real. Was the thing, you know? But, but I did like the, the humor that they added to it. Like mm. you're starting to see the bond between them and they're doing it in a kind of cool way. Uh. And um, she just has this book of puns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know how puns aren't funny? Until you keep saying them, yeah, and then they become like yeah. com- they compound and become hilarious. Yeah. Like they get exponentially funnier the more you yeah, try to catch someone up with a pun. And she's just doing it, and you're seeing him like slowly like break in the episode. I'm not giving away anything, right, right. but um, yeah. So they're just yeah. There's aspects of the show which are like fantastic, and then there's other parts where it's like I wait a week for this, and I look forward to it, and I'm so excited. I need a little don't bit. Don't let me more. down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let me down. Da- like I'm, I'm like. Yeah, it's crazy having a show again. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> like I'm way, I'm like going, I'm like, oh, so we got something to do Sunday. Yeah. yeah. But what if next week delivers on this week? Well, that's what hap- delivers meaning. Uh, like it'll deliver, this it'll week, deliver yeah. on next week and it'll tie up loose ends from this week's episode. Then I'm good. It's I can give you one episode, two episode in a row is pushing it. Yeah. And then three, three episodes yeah. in a row is three walking dead. I, I fucking tapped yeah. out. Yeah. But they're great, man. I'm telling you. We were talking about this on on Brilliant Idiots a bit, but like the the batting average of HBO mm-hmm. is truly remarkable. It's nothing like it. 
Yeah. Nothing like it. Almost no comics have specials that hit at the rate that HBO well, hits on TV shows. It's like right now, live active HBO shows. Succession. Everybody <laughs> loves Succession. Euphoria. Best show, one of the best shows I've ever seen. White Lotus. Yeah. Fire. House of Dragons. <laughs> the Last of Us. Jesus. Oh, wow. Like, oh, I'm wow. sure there's ones I'm forgetting. Batgirl, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? If yeah, they yeah. canceled it, but if they spent $100 million, go. That's why they're good. This is like what Steve Jobs did. Like, he would, like, release products, and they'd be, like, about to drop, and they invested fucking $100 million into this one thing. And he goes, eh, it's not right. Scrap it. Change it. We're not releasing it. They did it with a bunch of shit. And he's just like, if it's not perfect, we're not putting it up. There it is. Yeah. Because they maybe understand more than anybody. Every time you have a bad show, it erodes a little bit of trust in a brand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, it's like the consistency of going to a, a restaurant. If you could consistently make food that's a B plus, I'd rather that than sometimes A plus, sometimes C plus. Yeah. yeah. Like, I know that you were, you were posting about a Ruby Rosa, which is this great fucking Italian spot. Yeah. And it's like, the pizza's fire. And you go there, and that shit is consistent. 100%. That consistency... If you start to fluctuate, now I can't really, I'm, it's a date, I want to take a girl there. Yeah. And I don't know if you're going to give me A plus or C, I can't, I can't go. If you are a friend coming in town to visit me, I'm taking you to Ruby Rosa. Boom. Shout out to Julio, but I'm taking you, I know you're going to enjoy it. You're going to be like, yo, I'm not getting this anywhere else, and you're going to have a great time done. I don't have to stress about finding the right restaurant for you. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. great. And that's why that Netflix model where they're just throwing out so much shit, it's like, it's impossible to throw out that much and maintain the quality. You know, they tried to do a live action squid game. And then they had to scrap it because people were getting hurt. And just, it, there's no way that's going to be good. A oh, live action, uh, like an, a real squid no, game. No, that should be fire. That should be fire. Amazing. No, well, it they, pulled so, off. Correct. Yeah, that's the thing. You're yeah. not pulling it off. It's not going to be nearly as high stakes as the show. Also, it's like to even watch your own content. The whole point of the show is capitalism is a problem and it makes people like, eat themselves. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, and Netflix is like, that was a hit. Let's do that in real life. <laughs> like they missed the whole fucking point of the show. That is true. HBO would never lack that self awareness. That's funny. Yeah. I still would watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I still went to it. Bro, I that is that. so. It's crazy. Crazy, right? Dude, this reminds me, I went down to, um, you remember Manager Miles we had on the pod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Manager Miles just had his uh, 30th birthday. He's like, he's like, bro, would you come down and would you like roast me or whatever? And I never fucking do this, but I love this guy. And I was like, okay, fine. He's great. I'll do it. And uh, it was a Gatsby themed party, right? And I'm like, this guy's never fucking read The Great Gatsby. <laughs> it's like The Great Gatsby or Gatsby, the character, was a scam artist yeah. <laughs> that conned his way into high society by throwing extravagant events. Yeah. It's like, what are you admitting to all the people that yeah. are at this yeah. party? It shows the issue of like chasing wealth and shit. Yeah. Like, it's the people that watch like Wolf of Wall Street. And then he like, loses it all, or, by or the way. Or Wall Street. And, yeah. 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 And they heard Creed is good and they're like, Creed is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, that movie made me want to do that. Yeah, exactly. Wall like, Street? Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's certain movies that, 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 like, if I saw at a younger, more impressionable age, I would have absolutely, like, remember Charlie Wilson's War? Did you guys see that movie at all? Mm -hmm. I Tom knew Hanks of it, but I never it. saw it, yeah. And it was just, it made being a politician look kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. And then, this, you remember that? Yeah, great and then And then the same thing with The Wolf of Wall Street. I'm like, oh, wow, like, just ruining people's lives and, like, scamming them out of their money. And, like, this is awesome. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> and then nothing happens at the end? Yeah. And then you kind of go to jail, but you don't? Yeah. Like, what is the point of that movie? Yeah. yeah, it works out. Yeah, exactly. Like if you be the worst human, it works out. That's one where like they try to tie the moral in afterwards. You know what I mean? Like they do all this crazy shit, and they're like, "But don't do this," you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but we have to come up with the moral to make it justify what we're telling all these crazy fucking stories. I think that's yeah. why they they ha their life has to completely fall apart at the end of a mob movie. Like a mob movie can't end happily. Oh, mob movie. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, yeah, yeah. Endorse yeah. the lifestyle that like, you have to yeah. die. Or everybody you love dies. Everything has to fall. Casino, everything falls apart. Because it's too apart. romantic. Yeah. If, if, it, if like, it worked out. I'm doing that, <laughs> yo. I yeah. seen Scarface when I was younger. Still wanted still to do it. Right? <laughs> so it's crazy how many rappers love Scarface. Yeah, still and bring, bring on the problems. Yeah. Bring on the motherfucking problems. Bro, it's <laughs> crazy. dies. Everything falls apart yeah, for this no. man. He's like... It'll be different with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you just stop the movie right before the yeah. end. You just pause it. And he you got go. greedy. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, there I is something to that. I wonder if, I wonder if you can sell drugs. I wonder if there are people there who could do it without being too greedy. I've, I've yes. had this thought thousands yeah. of times. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I got But you don't think it's intoxicating? Nah. <laughs> 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 nah, you know what's funny? I know, I know, I know people who've been 
selling. Disciplined. Yeah, for a really long time. They don't really change the amount. They don't really add new mm-hmm. clients, and they've just been Question. kind of like gamble for, for a long Question. time. Question, if they applied that to something legitimate, do you no. think they would make just as much money? No. Probably not, because <laughs> drugs is just such fast money. I used, to like, think th- I, I, I used to think that, right? But I used to be like, oh, yeah, if these guys just like got into business, they'd be able to do the same thing in business. And it's like, no, they yeah, wouldn't. It's not this is an illegal drug that is addictive mm-hmm. by nature. Yeah. It's a lot different than selling fucking top soles or whatever, yeah, like, yeah. or like hamburger makers, you know? Like, it, that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. There's competition. Yeah. This one, you get to shoot your competition. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and the competition is terrified to do it. Like once it's legal to sell it, everybody's on that app. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, maybe some principles are similar, but please believe if they really thought that they had like the business acumen to like succeed with any product, they go do that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And some of the guys go legit. Yeah. And haven't really done much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Jay Z was a worse drug dealer than he is a businessman. Yeah. Mm. Like. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jay, well, that's why I saw he wasn't like kingpin. Like, he's he's a kingpin of business now. Oh yeah, but Way. he stopped. He's but that's why I thought continued. Maybe maybe you never know. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> that's why I thought even be, he wasn't a he's fine drug dealer. I guess based on what I hear, he made a, lot, a life. But then when he went legit, it's like oh, this guy's a fucking genius. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's why I was thinking of those guys. But that discipline applied it to something else. They could climb real high because oh, discipline yeah. is that's a good the hardest too. thing. Yeah. Discipline every fucking week or whatever. This is what I do. These are I live by this. That's hard, especially when you can get that greedy and there's that much temptation and there's still that discipline. I assume if you can apply that to something else, legitimate. Man, for me, it would be a combination of like greed and risk. It's like if at this amount I'm already doing 25 years, I need to make the most money at 25 years. Yeah. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. that's kind of how I would do the equation. Like if I'm selling the amount where it's just a misdemeanor, Okay, I'm not going past that because right. I can handle a misdemeanor and I can continue my life. Once we get into big years, I need big money to justify right. it. Yeah. yeah, like imagine, imagine getting 25 years and only making like a teacher's salary. Yeah, yeah, nah. yeah, and then not to mention the risk in day to day life. People trying to kill People you, trying to rob like, you. All that shit. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I'm telling you, there's. People that are just doing it normally where it's like, it's not the, I'm taking out the competition. It's not the, oh, I need to reach new heights and new money. It's like, no, this is like a nice little sum that I make that just pads what I do legally. Right. Oh, and they it, also have jobs. Yeah, they also have jobs. And so then they just do that. Can I ask addition. what they're selling? Are they selling like super hard shit uh, or like, hope. that's pretty hard. Yeah. That, but so they also work at a fuck at UPS or something like that because there's that guy who got picked. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy at U.S. Postal Service was uh, delivering coke, which is kind of uh, genius. Yeah, that's yeah. That's that's amazing. Amazing. yeah. yeah. And also put the tags on it and be like, it's not mine. That's a movie. Why? Why has no one made that movie? That shit is awesome. All right, like the dude that's doing UPS and also like slinging drugs on the side. No, there was a, there's a former dealer who's uh, gone talking about everything in his past about dealing and saying between UPS, FedEx, and the Postal Service, like UPS, all the packages come through a central facility and people there would know and they'd get the drugs and take them out or take them, resell uh, themselves. But the amount of drugs that the U.S. Postal Service has sent oh, is Oh, for sure. Un- That's the biggest drug dealer in America. Oh, yeah, hmm. yeah, because they're not even checking a lot of yeah. the boxes. Nah. He was just they like, barely thank check. you, you guys. Yeah. I also guess you can't apply regular business practices to drug dealing. You know what I mean? Like, you can't be like, oh, I'm going to scale. I'm going to franchise. I'm going to get all these employees. Like, because the more scalability that you do, the more open you make yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, you're operating outside the law. So it's not like you can even use the regular law, set up an LLC, do whatever the fuck. So, like, you might think, oh, I want to operate like a real entrepreneur. And that these people are, like, generally entrepreneurial. But then as you become a real business, you're more exposed. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, resisting the urge to be more efficient and, like, more economical. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so a lot of these like drug dealers, they gotta just be like, all right, yeah, I'm just gonna only That's where it's keep it keep it at this level. And they have that fucking discipline. Yeah. I think they gotta have some other way to like exercise their entrepreneurship. You know what I mean? Oh. Like keep, keep it as a hobby. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because like yeah, if this yeah. is your main thing and you want to scale and you want to be great, they're gonna get clipped eventually because you can't just keep on expanding exponentially without it being too exposed. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, hundred percent. It's a matter of time. Yeah. Like everybody who spends some serious time in a game says it. They're just like, you're gonna get caught. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hundred percent. Yeah. And you just get a hope that you accumulate enough money where you can handle the time 
and then get back out. All right, guys, we're gonna take a break real quick because you are drinking too much caffeine. I'm not saying you can't have your coffee. I love coffee, I love the ritual of it, but you cannot have it every day, and that is why you need an alternative, and that alternative is mud water. Mud water is a coffee alternative with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. That's why I'm doing this read. With only a fraction of the caffeine of a cup of coffee, you get energy without the anxiety, the jitters, or the crash that coffee normally gives you. Mud water leans on mushrooms and their blend of matcha and their blend of chai for sustained energy, and each ingredient was added for a purpose. You get lion's mane, that's a mushroom. You got chaga and rishi to support your immune system, and cinnamon for antioxidants, among other things. It tastes good, add a splash of oat milk if you need. Whatever you need to do, you're gonna be happy. It is also 100% USDA organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, and kosher certified. So go to mudwater, M-U-D-W-T-R.com slash flagrant. Again, that is M-U-D-W-T-R.com slash flagrant to support the show and use the code flagrant for 15% off. You have nothing to lose, you need to try it. Also, guys, tour dates, February 9th through 11th. This week, I am in Sacramento, California at the Punchline Comedy Club. Next month, March 9th through 11th, I'm going to be in Miami, Florida at the Miami Improv. Two show dates just added, and we got a lot more coming, guys. July 12th, I'm gonna be in Huntsville, Alabama at Stand Up Live, and July 13th, I'm gonna be in Nashville at Zany's Comedy Club. Guys, a lot more show dates are coming, so go to akashsing.com to get your tickets. Now, let's get back to the show. Listen, there's a big game coming up. Right? Oh, yeah. It's a big, big game, that Super Bowl. And listen, if you're going to put some money down on that Super Bowl, you're going to use Bet Online. Ooh, also, before yeah. we get to the bonus, oh, we yeah. got Flagrant got a little thing. Okay, talk uh, to us. If you sign up, you can play Super Bowl boxes. Everybody that's a Flagrant fan, Bet Online is going to give five of you $1,000 into your account. So you pick your box. You sign up at betonline.ag, put $10 or more on the Super Bowl boxes, and then in the comment section, let us know what box you chose, and then BetOnline is going to select five of you, put $1,000 in your account. So you can do that, betonline.ag, and then Miles is going to put a banner below so you know exactly where to go. Amazing. Uh, and they will still match. 50% of your deposit up to $1,000. Make sure you use that promo code FLAGRANT. You got this. Don't say we never looked out for you. And the Super Bowl boxers, just to clarify, they're the scores of the game. Yeah, you pick the score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've done that like with friends where you yeah. buy, you get to you get to put money down per box. So this yeah. is the same thing. Okay, exactly. cool. And in the comments, you're saying in the YouTube video. Yeah, the URLs in the YouTube video. And then the comments of the YouTube video, yeah. But okay. yeah, tell us what boxes you chose. Okay, okay. Well, what else we got, boys? What else cooking, man? We got China with the balloon. Everybody making a big deal out of that. Yeah, we mm -hmm. got the Kyrie trade. Kyrie. Which is of note to me just because I'm from Dallas and that's more stupid shit that Dallas sports is doing. Just driving me crazy. Okay, I have a theory on this. Okay. Because we, we've we all approached in a, we've all approached the Kyrie situation as people who are outside of the business, right? As fans. And we're just going, why would anybody want this guy on his team? Obviously, the skill is undeniable. But why would you put up with this headache, yeah. right? When the guy's not playing because of his political reasons, yeah. he's not playing because of his physical reasons. The guy just doesn't play, yeah. right? So why would you bring that person and put that person on your team? And of course, uh, the Dallas Mavericks make the trade. Yeah. My theory here is that Mark Cuban and other owners and other GMs, they have egos too. Oh, yeah. And they feel that they can motivate and manipulate players and, and also just other people that work for them mm. into doing the things that they want. Yeah. They have so much confidence that they've built these incredibly successful businesses, and they should have that confidence, right? So he's going, I've... I'm a billionaire because I was able to motivate people. I was able to get people on my side and believe in my vision. You don't think I can get this kid on my side to believe in my vision? Yeah. They this they kid believes the earth's flat. Yeah. <laughs> I could believe, I could get him to believe that, that he's a part of the Dallas Mavericks team. Like, it seems like the easiest thing I imagine for a guy like Mark Cuban. Yeah, I think you think you can change them. You're the guy who thinks they can change the girl. Don't save him. He don't want to be saved. Yeah, yeah. He can't <laughs> save this man. Although I, did, I was talking to a friend about this, a mutual friend of ours, and uh, I was saying Dallas, Dallas could really, the fan base could really love this guy. Oh, they're going to adore him. Wait, wait. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's anti-vax, possibly anti-Semitic. I feel like a lot of these things are going to line up with the Texas fan base. You know what I mean? Yeah, he you know, thinks the earth is flat. He don't believe, he's going to be at the fucking grassy knoll every day in Dallas. I'm trying to figure out the JFK conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> like, this yeah, guy yeah. is perfect for the Dallas fan base. And maybe that'll save him. But I just, every time you think, uh, every time you hear it's a risk, but we're going to take it, it almost never works out, especially in sports. A hundred percent. It's a risky move, but it could work. It never works out. 
Mm. Yeah, Never. yeah. But I think above that, like, not to say the fucking Texas fans are all like fucking anti Semites and shit, but just that I think they see him as a free thinker and like a maverick. Uh, and literally the whole ethos of the state yeah. is like, oh, we are the lone star. Yeah. Like, yeah. we push back on what everyone else is doing. And Kyrie is like literally an exemplification of that. Yeah. And is also nice at basketball. Bro, it was so funny today because I didn't know that uh, he was Jewish, Mark Cuban. <laughs> I thought you say Kyrie. I, no, I didn't know that either. No. <laughs> yeah, we just <laughs> Son, and then too. And then Charlemagne goes, I thought he was Cuban. <laughs> and I didn't think he was Cuban, but it wouldn't be the craziest thing. Right, right, right. Like, I did kind of think he was Latino or something. Yeah, I thought he was. Yeah. I thought he, I thought was, he was like he was mixed. an Anglo guy. Yeah. No, Jewish. Full? Wow. Havsies? Jewish. Dove? Son, you didn't even know about this. I one. honestly did wow. not know that he was. Uh, an... So, why are you doing this, Mark? Wow. Damn. Wow. Just makes sense, though, right, guys? Just saying. Just, uh, <laughs> the guy. Look, we got another one. We got so another one. Got another one. <laughs> now, the, the KD Boston trade, that shit is kind of crazy. That, Wait, did this happen? I think it officially went through. What? Like, what? Moments ago. Yeah, I think KD went to what? Boston. Yeah. No. I don't believe this. Am I bugging? Did I just make that up? Stephen A. Smith issued his major report. Oh, he's. No, I think it's a rumor. Oh, all right. My bad. He's yeah, on the verge can't... of potentially being moved. Yeah. I can't find anything. Oh, okay. So maybe it's a rumor, but... So they've gotten he... the team, basically. Yeah. yeah. But if he goes to Boston, whoo. That's scary. That is going to be a squad. It's going to be a squad. They definitely probably win. Definitely probably. <laughs> uh, but but <laughs> it... prohibitive favorites. Favorites are what yeah. that's going to say. But here's the thing. He'll forever be looked at as a guy who just was added to already great teams. Yeah. I don't know if he wants that. He doesn't. Ooh. I'm I'm sure he doesn't. Apparently. You don't think the, he, yes. that would be his team if he goes there? Well, it was Golden State was his team, but you're already going to a place with, you know, a few stars. Jason Tatum is the guy. Yeah. And either Jason Tatum hasn't won, so it's more up for grabs. It no, no, could be like LeBron KD, and Wade. KD would be the guy if he went there, yeah. Yeah. like LeBron and Wade. Yeah. But at the same time, the people, the public would view it as, you know, you're just hopping on a team that was already there, and then you're putting them over the top. Ooh. I mean, uh, they went to the finals last year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did go to the finals last year and almost won. They were up 2-1. Like, they should have won. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, and this year they're by far the best team in the East, probably overall best team. Yeah. And he they're will go there the and, and be the best player, there's no question. Yeah. But if we're looking for ways to discredit LeBron, there's no way that people aren't going to discredit KD. Do you think the Celtics, I mean, the Nets could do this on purpose knowing KD doesn't want it? Because apparently the Lakers and Suns made better offers for Kyrie than the Mavs did. Oh, he didn't They're want to send it to the, the Lakers. The owner didn't want to send him to the, the team owner, that he wanted to go yeah. to. Yeah. The Nets, the oh, Suns, oh, really? the Nets were offered two first round picks from the Lakers. Now they said this gives them the best chance to win now. I don't believe that shit for a second. Mm -hmm. Mavs traded good players, but not like that. Uh, so this, the Lakers offered two first round picks and Russell Westbrook, who with his contract is off the books this year. Mm. And then the Suns offered Chris Paul, Jay Crowder, and a first-round pick. Mm. And then the Nets said no. Yeah, it was, it was fixed. And now they're sending him to a team, and I don't know what your opinion is, but Dallas has a great ball handler in Luka. Yeah. And now it's Kyrie and Luka. Do they play well together? It could Does be. They could play really well together, but you're not looking at them as real contenders. You're just not. Yeah. I mean, you need the ball in Luka's hand. I think what's interesting is that Luca needs help yeah. scoring, and Kyrie is a you know guaranteed bucket. He can get you buckets. Yeah. But how much does Kyrie need to touch the ball? Is the question. Yeah. Well, Luca also needs rest. I think is what they were. Ah, uh, so somebody he's to getting bear hurt the all the time. Somebody to do all that. Mm. But I'm wondering if the Nets are like, you know what, KD. You got us into this mess. The last thing you want is to go to the Celtics and win a championship as another bus driver. We're sending you to the fucking Celtics, my guy. Mm. Have fun. Have fun. You made us keep this guy. Have fun. Mm. Mm. Like, what, are the, what do the Nets do now? Like, how do they lose all their stars and have, like, generally underwhelming seasons? Well, so now you Kyrie make, Irving. And you just restart? You rebuild, but you've given your the Rockets your draft picks, like, through 2027. Oh. Yeah. Because you did that for James Harden. Yeah. But they mortgage their future and just said, fuck draft it. draft picks for um, Kyrie? Uh, they got one first-round pick and two second-round picks, which is not much. Yeah. 
you're still in the hole heavy. Yeah. You're still, when you're bad, because you're not going to be good for a while, you're hoping the Mavericks are bad because you get their picks, mm -hmm. and then the Celtics are not going to be bad. You're going to get their picks. Mm -hmm. And you're giving up really good picks in the meantime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think how annoying Kyrie is. That the <laughs> owner was like, F I don't give a fuck how long we're bad. Get them out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that's kind of wild. And why did he request a trade specifically? Do we know? Just they, inner, inner they politics? They weren't going to pay him. Oh, that's right. Oh, he was really? working on a contract extension and they didn't want to do it. He said, he said, he claims, even if they were, he still wanted a trade. Oh. But it was like, come on. Ooh. No, 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 no. Kyrie's a problem. But just like, you know, this is sports. It's, you know, you have a rare ability. People will keep on giving you chances. Like, how many chances did fucking Antonio Brown get? Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. You know? That's true. That's my only hope is the Mavericks can trade him before everybody realizes this guy burns down every franchise. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what do we got? Let's do one more thing then get out of here. All right, you saw his viral video, yes. comic falling upstairs. How many people sent you this video? Uh, it was an unbelievable amount of people. <laughs> I mean, unreal. Okay, if anyone hasn't seen it, here you go. I've been having a lot of sexual escapades, as I let you know, like having little adventures with some freaky Chicago girls. And I've come to the realization, I've been talking to one, that I don't think pegging is necessarily that gay. <laughs> That was God right there. <laughs> Alex, you wild. <laughs> that was his God right there. So the Christian God. Yeah. He's like, Yo, so it's a guy God. on stage at the Laugh Factory in Chicago. Yo. And he's walking along the stage doing a set. And then he says, I've come to the realization that pegging is not necessarily that gay. And the second he says it, he falls off the stage <laughs> and then stumbles to get up. Nobody reacts at all. It's a dead silent when he falls. <laughs> And it's just the most awkward fucking video you've ever seen. <laughs> so what do great. you do? You finish that joke? Yeah, you I think to, you bro. have to. You got to. Just do it from the ground. I think you just lay there <laughs> and you finish it. <laughs> just Where's from, from the beyond. Rest? I need to see the rest of the video. I know. I, I wish they put the I rest don't want to be a hater. I kind of think I kind of think staged. Really? I, I, no it's very funny. Way. It doesn't change how funny it is to me. And I hope there's another angle that shows people, but like the fact there's no one there, no one responds, you don't even hear anything in the mic. Like, you know what yeah. I kind of think? I kind of think it was just an open mic. Maybe, yeah, And that's then true. that's where he fell. Now, he commented on the whatever the clip I saw. He said something like, this guy must be hilarious. You should check out more of his videos, which right. seems like, it seems like he took an L, and then he was like, yo, we should put this out. This would be oh, fun. Oh, of course. I, mean, I think it was organic, and then he was, yeah, it's so I don't funny. think it was just Laugh Factory being like, let's put this out. I think he was like, please put that out. Yeah, oh, of course. It's so funny. Bro, they and kudos to him for laughing at himself. <laughs> they subtitled the clip of him falling. <laughs> <laughs> like, so they sent it to an editor that was like, yeah, yeah spell it, paste it out, right? Like, there was production put into it. Uh -huh. But it is very funny. But nah, that kills it for me if you think he fell on purpose. I don't know. I don't believe he did. I, I just know. think he saw what it was after and was like, yeah. I have to put this out. Yeah. I don't know if he thought it'd be this big. <laughs> so that shit is hilarious. Did he, yeah. did he <laughs> film it or does the Laugh Factory film all Laugh Factory, Laugh Factory films films sets? Cool. So yeah. I think they were just filming. Yeah, it's incredibly funny. Yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> fucking unbelievable. Thank God they film all the sets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. You'd expect some reaction from the crowd or something. I don't know. Maybe yeah, it just well, didn't pick up in the mic. I don't know. I think it's an open mic where there's very few people there. But why is the mic not even on? No, it is. I just figured you'd hear the audience through the mic. Well, okay. when he falls, you hear the mic clunk. <laughs> so <laughs> if it's staged, you'd have had to tell them, hey, go turn on the mic. Yeah. And I'm going to go fall. So I do think it, it meant it was, wasn't supposed to happen. It was real. But I think when he saw it, he was like, this is hilarious. No, and I, again, I, kudos to him for being like, let's laugh at me. Yeah. Because I did never, I'm way too insecure to put that shit out. <laughs> really? I'm insecure to say the first line. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not even saying the joke. Yeah. Pegging isn't that gay? We, no, I'm not saying that. Yeah, that's not that's a joke to you. You say gay that, every joke single you, week. Yeah, but that's just yeah, the but, truth. You know, that's not, pegging that's not is a joke. not gay is say, gayer than saying you're gay. Saying pegging's not yeah. that gay is way uh, gayer than being like, I'm gay. Because for pegging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Shit. I mean, is pegging that gay, though? Yeah. 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 What if it's not a strap on? What if it's just an insertion? I don't even know what that means. Doesn't your book say no sodomy or whatever the fuck that mm -hmm. shit is? It says you can't lay with another man, but that doesn't, it doesn't say anything about your girl smashing you with a giant dildo. Oh, I, thought, nothing they, against I that. thought they say no butt fucking. No, nah, they just say you can't lay with a man. You can't lay with a man the way you lay with a woman. Well, what is Sodom and Gomorrah? They got burned and crisp and it was yeah. Sodom. That's dudes. That's my point, okay? It can't be dude on dude, but if it's a girl banging you with a giant penis, that's fine. Oh, It's a town of all dudes. Why didn't God just send some hoes up in there and see what happens? Yeah, yeah, no. Before he decides to burn it all down. That's on him. You got to take that up with him. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why make the town like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seems like he's asking for it. Yeah, right? A little Send bit. Send him up to fail. Yeah. yeah. 
I thought God was against like ass fucking like guy girl ass fucking. Yeah, too. sodomy is against yeah. the law. Yeah, 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 technically, but I don't Bro, know. Is it the Bible? That is it. Is it against the law? It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. This guy doesn't know. Yo, where's Shifty? <laughs> Somebody who actually knows this shit. <laughs> Imagine the people of like the town of Sodom finding out the Adam and Eve story, and they're like. All it takes is a rib. <laughs> I've been playing fucking gym for the last three years. I could have been making bitches. Is that what you said? Fuck. Like, that is crazy. Of course they didn't read the Bible. That's yeah. really their sin. If That's they read the Bible, they would know. They would know. They got girls locked in. <laughs> <laughs> right? You got, you got a woman inside of you. They're, right they're trans in the first place, yeah. really, if you think about it. Damn, man. Yeah. Well, anyway, listen. Whatever your name is, man. Yeah, I don't keep know. On, oh, keep on, on doing it. Give him a shout out. Oh, I don't, we gotta I don't, find out his name. his name. What's his name? I don't see his name. Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, hey, tell Malcolm in the middle. Keep on at. I want to see the whole joke. <laughs> yeah. We need Malcolm to send us the whole joke. Please send yeah. us. Agent Cody joke. Banks, you we got need. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the gym saga has has escalated. I don't know if you've seen this. Like we talked about this a little. Break bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. more and more people are addressing like girls filming in the gym and catching guys creeping on them and then posting the guys creeping, I guess as a way to retaliate against years of guys being creeps in the gym without any justice, right? Uh. And so now, but then people are calling it out being like, just because a guy walked past you doesn't mean that he's checking you out. Shout out to Joey Swole, dude. He be checking these hoes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then th no. this video went viral where basically it's a girl doing a squat, right? And she's filming. And then she gets to the bottom of the squat and she gets a little bit stuck. So, yeah, she should have stopped at that rep right there. Solid rep. So. That was me with Dove on my back. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's like, oh, 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 no. oh nah. Can't she just throw that shit back? Yeah. Yeah, just drop it. Yeah, I think technically she can. I don't know why she didn't. <laughs> just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> See? It's what happens. My knee would have been exploded, bro. This, bro, this is hard is to look at. This is athletic, honestly. They speed up the video because it's, Let it go. she's sitting there that long. This should be its own workout, really. Yeah, it's, it is impressive. This is its own exercise. Yeah, silent treatment. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually this girl comes and helps her out. Oh, she just didn't want the embarrassment of dropping the weight. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess, but yeah. like the real best ending of this video is if they just turn the lights off and they just <laughs> close the gym and she's like, hello, <laughs> anyone? <laughs> but yeah, and people are saying, oh, this is a case of like, be careful what you wish for. It I don't seems really, like uh, it. I don't know. I'm also like, I just feel like if any guy I mean, was there, I can't imagine a guy saw that and was like, I'm I think not she says excuse me to a guy at some point. He's got I his think. headphones in. He's not paying attention. Yeah, we don't look at women in the gym, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, we do, but... Nah, we don't. No, nah, we do. But, like, <laughs> we do. Nah. We look at people in the gym. Okay. Especially Especially a woman gym, at the bottom of a squat. Let's be honest about this. You're not looking yeah. at that. You know the thing that's crazy? Like, when we see influencers in the wild, we'll look, we're looking at them. because Influencers. Influencer. Yeah. Huh? You said it like influenza. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> like, we look at them because they're doing something. We see the tripod. Like, it's just curiosity. So when you see a girl at the gym with a fucking tripod, and you like, you can actually just be curious. You might not just be trying to look at her because of well, right. what she's doing. Mm, and so That was good. Yeah, you see? So good. They're just curious. <laughs> that was good. Just curious. Yes. Mm. Yes. I'm just, a, I'm just a content creator. Yeah. Looking at another content this creator. This is like when a bear content. goes up to a camper and he's like sniffing the tent and every animal expert's like, oh, he's just curious. He's not <laughs> hurt you. He's just yeah, sniffing. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. genuine and he's fucking biting on the glass dome. He's just curious. He's just, yeah, no, he just wants looking. to know he what doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just he genuinely know what he's curious. Yeah. Yeah. We're all curious. Just you know? curious, bro. We just want to know. They're curious too. They're looking at us. In, in the footage. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just... What's wrong with looking, bro? <laughs> you can't even look no more. That's the thing. You can't <laughs> leer. You can look, you can't leer. What is leer? Staring in a fucking creepy way. How long is that? Yeah, what's the time frame? Yo, just give us a time frame. And then if we go over max. it. Five, five seconds. seconds. Well, you can that's test it. Crazy. You can long, test it out. Just, that's what I'm saying, but that's what creeps do. Here. Three seconds, I was gonna say, but maybe that's too short. <laughs> look, it's just this. It's one, two, and then done. Here. Two seconds. Stop. Stare at me, stare at me. I'm just second and a half. That was long. I feel I, like you're slow as fuck with that, that timer, but yeah. You got a second and a half. I think it also depends on the person. Yeah. 
I, I think for you is the second and a half, I'll be honest. For Indians, it's probably shorter. We've it's done that to ourselves. Slightly I gotta be honest. It's, it's slightly lower. We've lower. done that to ourselves. I got to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's on us. That's 100% on us. I think us. depending on where you are, I think there's different people you can stare for longer. Yeah, black people, we don't get as much time as whites. You don't think so? We do a little you think street whites can stare harassment. The most? Like we're, we don't have the best rep. Uh, I guess that's yeah, a good yeah. point. Damn. Son, Excuse Me Miss was a hit song all about street harassment. Word. Facts. That's true. We, yeah. just wanna, we just want to see them smile. <laughs> That's it. Alex yeah. stopped staring at people after Burning Man. Yes. Stopped staring and smiling. Now he just hugs them. Yes. Uh, He's staring at strangers no, all over the city. And full just... on physical assault. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little weirdly funny about a girl filming herself for Instagram. Like, you can't stare at me at the gym, but you are allowed to stare at that exact same video on Instagram. Uh, that's a great point, <laughs> Which, dude. Holy obviously, is, there's two different things, but it is funny to me that someone's like, just don't, I, they just don't want to know. Yeah, exactly. They like that song. I yeah. don't want to know. One person can't stare at me. If you're creeping, I'm, please don't let it show. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's such a good point, you though. You have bars today, bro. It is kind of funny. Like, <laughs> what? Millions of people. Uh, you, you're shooting this content at a gym for millions of people to gawk at you? Yeah. And I do, yeah. I do get the frustration. It's like, this is, their, this is their version of, like, getting justice when there was no recourse for years or whatever. But it is funny. It's like I got a ring light and I'm filming my ass at the gym. Yeah, but how often did like stairs turn into like you didn't pay for drinks that night? Wait, what? Mm -hmm. Like there's a good side of getting stared at. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, interesting the, take. The positive side is we you, make a, stare, make an argument for you <laughs> stare and then you get drinks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? You, like, have, you have family maybe one day. What if I at the gym though? <laughs> Say again? What you paying for at the gym? Yeah, is it a protein shake? Can I get you a smoothie? <laughs> <laughs> that, that one girl need a little protein shake. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should, maybe she should accept it some stairs. This yeah. is from the trainer in the corner. Exactly. No, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to say that, like, there has to be some level of engagement. We have to allow some level of engagement. Yeah. If you don't want someone to talk to you, okay, that's fine. But there's a difference between inconvenience and harassment. We need Texas Day Brazil, like, Brazilian steakhouse cards. I what is that? that? Oh, the green light, red light, green oh, yeah, light? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. the red light, green light is depending on who you are. So you can't even yeah. do that. It's like, you just, listen, in order for your man that you fucking love and you're going to have children with and have a family with, in order for them to approach you, you're going to need to get approached by a bunch of motherfuckers that ain't shit. Mm. That's just the name of the game. And if nobody approaches you, and guys had to you don't approach get a lot it. of women who ain't shit to meet the one. Of course. <laughs> That's how the world goes around. Hell yeah, we don't bitch about it. All these girls I had to dick down for years before I found the love of my life. How about your struggle? Nobody ever talks about this man's struggle. Yeah, I mean, you know how many girls I had to fuck that I didn't love? Man. Yeah. You know how many oh, loveless damn. dickens I done given, yeah. bro? How many loveless cocksucks he got? A waste yeah. of time. Unsweet cocksucks? Nobody talks about the unsweet What a waste. Cocks. Too many pumps, man. Too many pumps, Son, What a waste. Y'all know pumping, how many bro. pumps I wasted, bro? Son. You know how many good boners I wasted? <laughs> a man only gets about 7,000 good boners in his yeah, life. Think so? Why don't they talk about that? Oh, he's talking about ovaries. Ah. Yeah. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We yeah. all wasted a lot of sperm. We can use that sperm now. Now, yeah. sperm you keep making, but hard dick goes away. Yeah. I'm saying the good sperm, though. You don't My know dick was like up. one of our trees, bro. <laughs> well, these are fake. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, this is, listen, this is the name of the game. You ever, the name of the game, You ever right? wake up with a boner now and you're like, oh, shit, No, nice. how about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You never hey, Mark, it never happens no. once. Hey, 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 no, one time, I like, don't. On a Thursday, you wake up with a boner, you're like, oh, sick. If I wake up with a boner... I'm like, who's raping me? <laughs> Somebody's sucking my dick in my sleep Where or something like that. What happened? It's like Jumanji. Oh, what year is it? Where am I? That's what I think. I big. think I'm dreaming. I woke up and I'm like, am I still? <laughs> am I still having a dream Who's right now? Whose dick is in my pants? No. <laughs> <laughs> Whose dick is this? Who put a dick right here? What the hell is happening? For sure. I don't know. You Come don't on. Even, you don't even recognize your own dick? That was nah. crazy. That's no. honestly scary, dude. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Every time I talk to like, every time I talk to women, they don't seem that concerned about this. Are guys annoying? Sure. Can guys be creepy? Sure. A hundred percent. Especially if it's fucking late at night, you're walking alone. But like in a public place, a guy coming to hit on you, most girls don't seem. Matter of fact, most like hot girls complain that it doesn't happen enough. I hear that a lot from women. So ugly. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? All these girls are like, oh, it's so difficult. It's like, well, <laughs> well, most beautiful women that you speak to be like, guys never hit on me. Yeah. Mm. Y'all look too attainable is the problem. 
Hmm. Mm. Maybe that's why they're upset because they're looking at these guys hitting on them like, why do you think you could get me? Oh. So it's an ego hit and they're blaming it on harassment. But in reality, they're, they're upset that a guy that they thought they were too good for is hitting on them. Mm. Why do you think you could have me? Well, because you can't bench 125. <laughs> <laughs> or squat, squat, or whatever yeah, that yeah. was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bench I don't know how to lift. 125 is kind of heavy, right? Kind of. That's two 45s. That's two you like warm up. Yeah. No, 135. 135. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 135. Yeah. Yeah, I got that one. I'll throw that shit up. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you do. Nah, I got that. I, I don't you think you do. For one. For he one. doesn't bench. No, you could do it. No, I could do that one. But you, you got long bench. arms, a problem. Yeah, long arms make that shit difficult. Also, being weak. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what makes that shit difficult. Uh, I, did it, I did it twice. I did it twice, 135. Really? I did you did? Twice in my life. Yeah, not now. There's no way I can do I it. I believe now. you could throw it up. No, 135 is not that bad. I would rep with 135. Yeah, but you don't do it now. Like, that's like muscle that you have to continue working. No, nah, but you keep that strength. Longer. You keep that Oh, like, you do, bench. Oh, okay. Every I once thought in you were only cardio. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, the most I ever did, what's the most you ever bench? Um, Two, I, 215 is my guess. I think 225. Ooh. No, you've done more than that. You can do more than that right you now. You can do more than that. I would think yeah. you could do more than that. That's two plates much, each side. How much is three plates? I didn't, I, I like, three fits I was struggling, yeah. but my friend was like, that's like spotting, but I didn't. Three plates each side? That's yeah. 315. Yeah, it's like 315. Yeah, so then that was. That's crazy. That's very different than 215. That's way different than 215. That's extremely different. I didn't fucking add up. That's right. a human body, bro. Yeah. That's a whole human. That's a, an offensive lineman. Like that's not a human body. <laughs> that's not a human body. That's an offensive lineman. No, he cut out 100 pounds. That's yeah. a person. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Bad at math. The math wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, but that's like a e. That's ego math. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't really do plates. I like free weights. What do you do with the dumbbells? Dumbbells. Right now, I'm up to like seventies. But oh I've, wow, I've been. I used to be like hundreds. Each. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. I mean, remember when we met Al? That man was doing push-ups with his dick out on IG all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this guy will never let me. That's why I need to wear fucking tights just to keep it to control the dick. Yeah. Not high. Mm. Set the fly. We'll get you some tights. <laughs> anyway, y'all, listen. Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate y'all. We will see you this week, Thursday. Peace.